I think we're in. Hi. Oh, it man. takes them a little bit. Uh, people are asking, who is Tammy? You tweeted that the new trailer boy is Tammy. That's me. Uh, can oh, you... Was there a typo in there? No, no, I no, I did it a few days ago. I called myself Tammy on purpose. Can you guys oh. see us and hear us or what? We should be good. But uh, I'm not getting any new chat or anything. What's going on here? Yeah, always something, isn't it? Yeah, we're on. We're on? Yeah. Fantastic. Hi, everybody. But it seems like I, I'm having issues with chat. Chat is, like, not loading or something. It seems very slow. Anyways, hmm. good, good evening, everybody. Good evening. What's up, man? How uh, how are you? Yeah, somebody says I've been biking now. I... I just got this bike. I bought this bike used oh, on eBay, uh -huh. and I swore I would never use eBay anymore after eBay was really problematic with our merch stuff. Right. Or whatever. And the back wheel is rubbing against the frame, and I cannot fucking figure out how to fix it. Oh, uh, shit. This uh, is very thrilling stuff, but this is, my <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with. Although apparently Savan, our like animator and producer and director for Mars, yeah. used to work in a bike shop. So next time I go over there to do Mars nodes, I'm going to bring the bike. Hopefully. Oh, good. good. By the way, so I went over to, to the Midnight Kids, the studio, mm -hmm. last week and sat in for a session of like notes on Mars. It's looking really great, man. Good. So uh, how's it coming? Just chugging along like like always? I mean, it's it's hard to know. It feels like it's going to feel very unfinished. And then at the end, it's going to be like, nee, pop. Yeah. You know what I mean? So sure. it's like there's a lot of like kind of raw shit. Yeah. But um, but it is definitely moving. There's a lot of progress happening, and we're we're still, as far as I know, we're still on track to have it done in September. So awesome! I was just thinking yeah. about this. So the movie's scheduled to be done in September. Your movie, your horror movie, Barbarian, comes out in September. September. Yeah, September be, 9th. Yeah. September's gonna be off the chain. That's gonna be that's gonna be a good month for September's us. September's gonna be big. It's gonna be a good yeah. deal. Wowzer! Well, hey everybody. So uh, people are seeing the ads and coming in and stuff. Uh, so they're just getting in here now. Can you let us know? Because we're we're doing a different setup tonight. From I'm uh, getting everything set up so I can be the home base for streams instead of Sam or Nate. So because uh, fuck those guys, right? Uh, so let us know. I, I have a feeling it'll be the smoothest with you. I'm not saying shit. My name's Paul, and this shit I, is young. I'll say it. I feel like it will be <laughs> smoothest with you. It has not been smooth for a little while. Oh, okay. You're also like... Hey, Zach, would you rather get $10 million or have your toes removed? Wow, what a good question. Oh, man. It's early, and people are already that drunk. Uh, but... I think maybe $10 million. But I don't know. If you have your toes removed, like, what? how, how fucked up is your walking if you have no toes? Um... Okay, well, here's the deal. So they, how Can you, you walk? Wait, how many toes are we talking about? All, all toes. Okay, you lose all your toes? All toes. I, I think feel like you could still toes. walk. You probably just know. aren't as nimble. Let's see here. I mean, you're using your toes to balance, especially There's when no way you could possibly test this out to me. You have I'm toes. I'm walking you can't with get toes around. on. Okay. Yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm not trying to walk without toes. I'm paying attention to how I use my toes as I walk, and I feel like they're important. Because uh, yeah. it's like it's like gripping the ground and they're maintaining balance. Now, I'm fat, right? I have this front weight so that the heels can't support the front weight. So the toes carry that load. So since you're not fat, maybe you could walk just on your heels. It's like, as you're like walking back and forth, it's just your belly. And you're like, now I'm fat. Like, like, yeah, like, we oh know. It looks, God, like, it looks like a, the ghost of a bowling ball. <laughs> oh, my God. Amazing. Kirby. Welcome, um, Big D Liquor says, welcome everyone to Toe Boys. Welcome back to Toe Boys. We're I kind of think it. I might take 10 million. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would take 10 million. I would lose my toes. If they could be safely removed, I'd walk weird. But then I'd be like, dude, I have 10 million bucks. I'd, what would I do with 10 million bucks? Uh, I would just like, I feel like that's all I would need to live. Here's the thing, though. I got confused by the question. I thought they asked you, would you like $10 million or lose all your toes? 
And I was like, well, that's a dumb Maybe they did, but I think we, I think we know that. I think we, we get the vibe. Right. I mean. If you had $10 million, Timmy, what, what do you do with it? You got 10 mil. Okay, Go. so no toes, $10 million. First off, prosthetic toes, so I don't have to lose weight. Uh, and then, okay, 10 million bucks. I pay off all my stuff. Like, I'd, I'd get a nicer house in the country. Um, Where? I mean, maybe still here, because I actually, I mean, the job I'm doing. If you had is, 10 million, is, you'd stay in South well, Dakota. I got my would you daughter. stay in Watertown? Okay, are we saying I could bring Margaret with me anywhere? Sure. I mean, yeah, you know. I'm, There's no rules. You get 10 million. Right. You, you do whatever is, you want. I've been stuck in don't shake the boat mode for so long that it's hard to. What does that mean? Don't rock the boat. Oh, but, you know, just stay steady here and keep, you know, because she's doing fine. So just stay here and not try to do too much crazy stuff. But anyway, so. So do you wait till she's 18 and goes to college and then you just fucking oh, ball? Heroin. No, but uh, <laughs> not really. Okay. So if I have $10 million, yeah, no, we, we'd, I, I'd buy us a. Uh, I get a nicer house here so she can keep going to school with her friends. Like, she just made a really good crew of friends. So keep her here. Uh, buy a really nice, uh, nice house here. Buy a house somewhere warm. Maybe on an island away from, like, people. What island? I don't know. But, I mean, then you're talking about blowing all your millions right there because that can get expensive, you know? Maybe. I think you could get a nice house on an island for a mill. Okay. Uh... Okay, so but then I depends get, on the island, not in Hawaii, right. but you could find an island like Puerto Rico. You go down to Puerto Rico, right. you get a great house. For but even like just a shack somewhere would be cool. Uh, what about uh, okay? Uh, then I get a cabin somewhere like the Black Hills of South Dakota, which is a cool area, or some other mountain region, you know. Um, I don't know, and then uh, I just don't think very big when it comes to money because I'm just so used to not having any. <laughs> Now, here's the question. If you got a big house in South Dakota, do you feel like the community would resent you? No, because it's so conservative and Republican here that big house means you're a good person is kind of how it shakes down. Big house means you're a good person? <laughs> well, geez, that's how they vote for mayor. That's how they vote for you know, anybody. It's like, oh, they're rich. They must know what they're doing. You know what I mean? That's like... Wow. That's, how, I, that's probably me talking down on a lot of people because I know there's good people here and obviously whatever, but like... I feel like a lot of people would be like, oh, he's cool. He has a big house, you know? Uh, wow. You know, but if, but, you know, then if they knew that I like, you know, don't go hunting and vote red, maybe they would then, you know, be like, why does he get to be rich? You know? So I don't know. Yeah. What would you do, man? I think I would buy, I think I would probably buy a place in New York City. Yeah, there you go. I think I'd do that. I think I'd be bi-coastal properly. Yeah. And then I'd probably bank the rest, let the interest, you know, do its thing. And then every year I'd go on like a big vacation. Ooh, so I, it, it, would, it would change my life and that I would become bi-coastal. I'd probably spend like spring and fall in New York, winter and summer in LA. And every year I would like take a three week banger vacation for I the like rest of my that. life. I like That's that. what I'd do. Hey, here's it's funny. I had a conversation with a with someone who was like the star of like a big sitcom that went for like nine years. Uh -huh. And I remember saying something. We we're talking about money or something like that. And I was like, oh, man, like if I had that much money, I, you know, you'd never have to think about money again for the rest of your life. We we're talking about a big amount of money. Yeah. And he was like, he's like, dude, how much money do you think you would need to never have to worry about money for your kids and everything? And right. I was like, I was like, I guess. $20 million. He goes, $20 million? He's like, talk to me when you have $20 million. You won't think that way. Okay. It's interesting. I, I guess like the lizard grows to the size of its cage. You know uh, what I mean? Uh -huh. like, I get that. I think of $20 million as like a, a near infinite amount of money. You yeah. know, it's like if yeah. you had that, like you're done, dude. You, you're in yeah. the end zone. Fuck it. You, you don't have... need to think about money ever again. And he's like, that's ridiculous. Like that's not even that much money. Wow. It's weird. So Sad. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, I couldn't even think what to what to. I'm trying to figure out how to turn off sounds right now. But uh, anyway, so okay, so I have. I, I'm bad at like. I'll think about something, and then when I actually get asked about it, forget about it. But I have thought about this millions of dollars things a few times recently, just because my office keeps uh, buying lottery tickets, right? Like we keep pitching in a lottery ticket. So what I've thought about several times is fund the movie. And start a, you know, get a fund going for a production company, you know, like for us, basically, you know, 
Is that what you would want to do? I think, well, let's say, I mean, if you, it depends on the amount of money. If it was only 10 million, I don't know, maybe. But if I won like a large chunk from a lottery where I had like 50 or 100 million, yes. You know what I mean? I'd uh, give you money for your second horror movie. I'd finish Mars. I'd see what we want to do as a group next. I'd fund other stuff that I think is cool. You know what I mean? That would be cool. Like Annapurna, you know, like that company. It's yes. like a yeah. billionaires who are just like, let's go ahead and just become a studio yeah. and just like make interesting movies. Yeah, that's, that's what they did. Cool. And did you know I was looking this up for some other reason? Oh, because I because I had that idea. Then I'm like, has a lottery winner, I Googled, has a lottery winner ever started a film? production company and this lady did and every film just tanked hard and she's from somewhere in southern california or something and like there are a bunch of like i don't even remember the names of any of the movies or what they were about they look like well, that's comedies. because like dude financing financing independent movies or any movie is like insane it's like yeah. It's like opening a restaurant. It's like, that is not a good use of your money. Like they right. mostly tank. They mostly yeah. fail. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And like, so a lot of this lady's movies are the ones that you like scroll past on Amazon and you're like, I've never heard of that movie. What is that? That's what yeah. they, that's what Do they have any big stars in them or are they nah, all just not like, that I noticed. They were just nah. fucking movies. But like, yeah. what are the budgets of these movies? I don't know. I, I can't remember how much money she won. It it wasn't even that much money, but I feel like if you smartly invested the if you smartly okay, you get a bunch of millions of dollars, you start a production company, and you're very fucking careful about the first like maybe five movies, you know, maybe three, four movies, and you know, try and be very selective, then you can maybe broaden yeah. broaden out. But you gotta that first couple have to be big unless you you know so you don't lose your money because you think about like all right miramax for example they've got huge you know financing indie movies but they had a couple that probably weren't big hits and then you know pulp fiction oh they were they know? were constantly on the verge of bankruptcy yeah. like all, even when they were having big hits then they would make a bunch of movies that tanked i mean that right. that was a that was a really fraught company even though we think of them as like the ultimate independent movie studio they were they were always a hair's breadth away from from destruction right somebody says zach do you remember what street you lived on when you went to temple yes i do i lived well first i lived in the dorm so i lived in the johnson dorm and then i li lived in society hill on spruce and fifth in a, in a row house there oh. i don't know why someone wants to know that that's the answer <laughs> they're gonna go by and like uh carve your name in the wet cement or something yeah. i'm trying to i'm trying to get the sound effects Turned off. Zach, somebody says, Zach, how was Comic-Con? Comic-Con was fun, man. I, I went to Comic-Con. Sarah and I went in and walked the floor, which is, have you ever been to Comic-Con, Timmy? Not Comic-Con, uh, not that one, but I've been to a bunch of cons. It was like, uh, first of all, on the floor, it, it's so not my thing. I'm not right. into like nerd stuff, you right. know, so like yeah. a giant massive space dedicated to comic books and Star Wars and Legos yeah. and, 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 you know, all those things was just like, Whoa, it was really yeah. crowded and it was like none of the things, it was like just a ton of ads for shit I'm not really yes. into. Yes, yeah, and even when I go to those, that's what I, how I feel, you know? Yeah, but it was cool to see. It was cool to see all the people in the crazy costumes. Yeah. Also, San Diego is fucking busted, dude. I don't know if you'd spent much time there, <laughs> but I was like, this place is like, there are like a ton, I guess every city on the West Coast is like filled with like shambling meth heads and tweakers uh -huh. and stuff but there were a fucking ton in san diego um anyway but then we screened the movie it went great justin came we did a little little hang and a q a afterwards and it was really fun so that's yeah, awesome that was good. yeah it was that's awesome. good to hear man i've uh yeah comic-con there was a while where i was like i was like god i wish i could go but lately it's like ah eh, you know because it, it does turn into a big commercial thing but for for the situation you're in it's like perfect to go get it you know go get attention for your thing you know yeah it was cool to go down there for like one night uh -huh. walk the floor do the screening had dinner with some people and then like came back in the morning had a great time it was yeah, awesome that's awesome I'm still, um uh... zach everyone was talking about barbarian on the fantastic plastic stream last night oh, oh that's cool cool i hear you have a trailer before nope i do have a, the trailers before nope yeah in most places in most places. So I came to like, learn, Timmy, yes. that it's very, because I asked the, our Disney uh, marketing team, I was like, my friend went and saw Black Phone and the trailer didn't run. And they were like, well, yeah, I mean, like it runs in front of like 60% of uh -huh. movies. So like we are in front of Nope, we're probably in front of 60% of Nopes. Yeah. And apparently that's, that's actually above average. So right. you never buy a trailer for like every, it, you don't like own that movies, right. you know, 
time, whatever I'm trying to say, you know what I'm. Yeah, yeah, no, I can be yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so if you go see Nope, I'd say you have a sixty percent chance of seeing my trailer. If you live somewhere where there's more people than cows, it's probably higher chances. Because like, I think the reason we didn't uh, get it uh, in front of Black Phone is because of. You know, it probably partially had to do with the company that owns the movie theater, you know, because it's like a weird company. It's not an AMC. Yeah, it could be. Or uh, I think, like, if you go see it at an AMC, I think you'll definitely see yeah. it. Um, anyway, somebody says, uh, funny how Zach talks shit on homeless meth heads in San Diego while living in the epicenter of homeless hordes up in L.A. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't think he, I think Zach also knows, and it was not even saying this, but he knows it's not their fault. It's just like yeah. it's hard to like. I'm not talking shit on yeah. on homeless meth heads. How dare they? Have I'm problems. not saying that LA doesn't have a ton. We right, do. Yeah, yeah. I was just surprised to see so many in San Diego. Right. You fuck. <laughs> um, I mean, Zach, I, you going to catch Gulch tomorrow? Wait, I thought Gulch broke up. McGee 1000, talk to me. Is Gulch back together? Am I out of my fucking Are they, mind? Uh, hard- Are they playing in LA? Hold on, Timmy. Hardcore band? Gulch band. I don't even know what to search. Uh, let's just see what happens when I do this. News. They got to be broken up. Sorry, I totally derailed. This is it's a big okay. deal. But, Gul- but Gulch, they're hardcore, right? Yeah, they're, they're a hardcore punk band. I fucking love them. Didn't they just drop a song? Did they drop a song? Did they drop a Did they drop a single? I don't know, man. I'll I'll, I'll dig into this later. That's amazing. Cool. Um. Anyway, what? Sorry. What were we talking about? Well, I'm just trying to turn off all this chat shit. But uh, we were we were talking about Comic Con, and uh, you went there, and it was fun because I you told me when your thing was scre- uh, screening, when your movie was screening last Saturday night, and so I was checking out. It was late here, like by the time the movie would have gone out, but I was still up, and so I was checking Twitter, and like I saw a couple people like start talking about it and stuff, and. It's cool, you know. They yeah. liked, they liked it. They were saying it was, uh, and you showed me a link about this too. But a lot of people are saying it's like fucked up and like it's a WTF kind of movie, you know. It's a fucked up movie, and it's not a, it's not a normal structured movie. So, and right. I'll say this: the movie that the trailer is advertising is not the movie right. that you're going to see in the theater. It 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 is different than the advertised movie in a good way. Right. And so it was it's a little risky where I'm like, fuck, the trailer just doesn't tell you like what you're going to get, like because it would be the ultimate spoiler. But um, but yeah, um, but also I don't know how to talk about it. It's hard. <laughs> I've been it's funny because I've been asked to go on a lot of podcasts uh, lately to, to, to kind of promote it. But sure. like, I don't really want to even talk about it because I, I can't I ruin it. And so I. I don't know what to do like yeah uh, that's got to be tough well but the thing is too it's like okay so as far as the trailer goes it's like well i think it's probably safe to say if you're digging what the trailer says or what the trailer seems to be you'll, you'll like what this is you know what i mean yeah definitely i mean look it is a horror movie right. um the trailer the, the trailer kind of nails the tone but it doesn't yeah but like as far as like a girl goes into an airbnb that's double booked it's like yes that's the first th- Five minutes of the movie, like right. everything you see in that in the trailers, like you get that real fast, yeah. and then the movie takes off. So right. I, I don't know how to, uh, yeah. Um, talk about Mars. We already talked about Mars. You're a little late, but Mars is coming out in September. I I've been in, giving some notes. Looks great. Uh, it's coming along. Progress every time. Um, the train is on the track. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mars is looking good. Um. Yeah, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're, and we're still continuing to fund it. Every time you make donations here, subscribe, do any of that kind of stuff, buy merch, anything, all the money is still going to Mars. And we're just about done, uh, you know, but uh, we still have stuff to pay for, essentially, you know, so. Yeah. Um, Dan S907 keeps asking me to say things to Brennan. He's like, Zach, tell Brennan he's a bitch and he can't handle your movie. Zach, Zach, hey, Zach, tell Brennan that, that he sucks at Elden Ring. Tell, uh, <laughs> t- t- tell Brennan. Uh, <laughs> that reminds um, me I, of, that, of that Todd Berry bit about how he, he has this bit about how when he does a show and someone's like, hey, it's my buddy. Someone came up to him right before the show. It's my buddy's birthday. Can you make fun of him on stage? And Todd's like, I love, I love how people do that. They come up and say, hey, I know you have a show planned, but something's come up. and now we don't have this planned out but it is funny like okay i got you all to myself what can i do oh it's time to pay brennan back for that time he filled my strap with glue you know 
Um, hey, there's a few donos. I could read them. Uh, do them. Do the dono. Dr. Fun MD donated 10 bucks. Says, Zach, I'm so excited for Barbarian. It comes out on Thank my you. birthday. Cool. On my birthday. Thank you. One question. Does it seem like there is a way that goes to the place that you wear? <laughs> You son of a bitch. I got you. Pop-Tart donated 20 bucks. Thank you. It says, Zach, you're wow, glowing. Thank you. You're glowing, and thanks to the both of you for making my Saturday better. And then also a dono from Cosmo Bubbles. So thank you, everybody. And Thank uh, you, guys. Yeah, Sam is uh, on sabbatical. Darren is uh, laid up. So it's just the two of us right now. So so wait, did Darren have COVID? Yeah. he. Uh, I, I, I'm sure this is fine to talk about. He's doing okay. Uh, he got COVID in the land of my ancestors. They went and visited Ireland, and then he came back and developed COVID like a couple days later. So mm. uh, you can't travel yet, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to London uh, at oh, the, right. uh, the end of August. Yeah. For that Aero Video Festival thing, right? For Fright Fest. Fright yeah. Fest. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. This so is Zach. What's on your hat? Uh, this is what's on my hat. Laugh now, apocalypse later. What's that for? Or just yeah, a thing? Just, That's just cool. Doom. Just, just general <laughs> doom. Well, but sta- the staving off of doom in support of having a good time. Yeah. yeah right. You get it. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um. So what else is new? What else is new? I don't know. What's going on with you? Oh, wait. Okay, so, Timmy, you texted me last night that you watched St. Maud, which is one of my yes! favorite horror movies. Right. I'm so glad you did. What, what, but I didn't get from your text okay. that you were you were not effusive, which is okay. Maybe what does that mean? Like it as much as I like it. Oh, no, it's just because I was late and I was trying to watch another movie right after it. Uh, but, no, I liked it a lot. And I liked... Uh, you know, it's one of those uh, slow, slow kind of things. But it, it for you know, it, it, and you kind of feel like you know where it's going, sort of. But I didn't mind mm-hmm. that. Like obviously, uh, you know, the way this person is, you know, it's not going to end up being good. But I like the ways that they do it because I didn't expect the ending to be like that. And the the corn, the popcorn kernels. Wait, what are the popcorn kernels? Okay. You texted me last night. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember said, the popcorn kernels. Yeah, this is all I texted Zach. I just brought it up. I liked it. That last quick shot, yeesh, and the popcorn seeds, ha, ha, ha. Okay, yeah, that doesn't fucking say... That's, there's no information in those messages. <laughs> okay, so there's a scene where she's trying to give herself pain because she's, like, super, super, super religious, and uh, her whole thing is about, like, using the pain to, you know... Yeah. Uh, support your faith or whatever so there's a scene where she puts a bunch of uncooked popcorn kernels on the ground and kneels on them with her bare knees and then like before she prays i was just like ah because you know it's always good like we talked about this a little bit the last time it was just me and you but it's always good in a horror movie or anything like that to come up with new ways to cause pain (laughs) <laughs> and that I hadn't seen that one yet, you know. So and doesn't she also walk around with glass in her shoes though? Uh, yeah, no, it's not glass. She she takes like a postcard or something and puts a bunch of uh, tacks through it and slides that in like the sole oh. of her shoe. Oh yeah. So, but I gotta say though, the, I think that there's a scene in Saint Maud that made me jump more than any movie has ever made me jump. And I, do you know what I'm talking about? It's near the end on the bed. Oh, with the lady. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I jumped at that too. I, I thought that was like the greatest jump scare I've ever right. seen. And also yeah. because like, is it real? Is it not? Probably not. Right. You know, it's but, not. I mean, I think yeah. we can safely say right. it's not. But it, sorry, like, I gotta use the bathroom. Hang yeah, on. Yeah, just like on. the very end. Timmy, you're kind of quiet. Turn up the volume. You got it, everybody. How's that? How's that? A little bit better. How's everybody doing? Let's look at chat. What do we got going? Have you guys seen the new Marilyn Monroe trailer for Netflix? It's NC-17. That's crazy. I think that's that's a crazy thing. How do I get, get this out of my way? Go away. Oh, I feel so boomery right now trying to figure out this chat thing I'm looking at. Timmy, can you turn your volume... Up, Zach is much louder. Okay, well, when he gets back, we'll figure out the levels a little better. How am I sounding right now? I'm okay. Where is the rest of the gang? Well, uh, okay. Uh, Darren is not feeling well, so he's not here. Zach has a baby, so he's or not Zach. Sam has a baby. Zach's uh, pooping. Uh, <laughs> 
Sam has a baby. Darren is not feeling well. Trevor hasn't been here for a while. So uh, that is why it's just two of us tonight. So there you go. Um, do I think the new D&D movie will be good? Yeah, I think it looks kind of fun. My, my daughter thought it looked good, so I'll take her, you know. Uh, I like Chris Pine. Yeah, me too. I think I think he's really good at stuff like that. And it was funny. Yeah. When, when you were at Comic-Con and I was like trying to search for terms on Twitter and stuff, barbarian, it was either about your movie or about Michelle Rodriguez playing a barbarian in that movie. So that's how I even found oh, out. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how I found out that movie even exists. I'm like, oh, there's a new Dungeons & Dragons movie. Oh, yeah, interesting. <laughs> I didn't see the old one. It's apparently really, really bad. Uh, it's got one. I didn't movie. know they made an old one. Yeah, it's like in 2000 2002 it's got like one of the wayans brothers in it <clears throat> you know if they make uh this movie work if if it's like if it's a good movie and makes a ton of money they're gonna have a new franchise that will go like all the way i think that D yeah. D, it's like where have they been hiding that one like that is such yeah. a no-brainer yeah totally it's uh well and i think the, the problem with adapting it is similar to the problem with adapting a video game into a movie because it's like, you know, there's never been really a great video game movie, and it's it, it's because it's like there's this, there's something when you enjoy a video game, there's something about the interaction that makes the story better, even if it's not that great of a story. Right. And right. it's like, so when you take that away, it's like, okay, and, and how do they replace that? And and the video game movies are always trying to find out different ways to replace that. It's like when Doom, that shitty Doom movie with Carl Urban, had like three minutes at the end in first person. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, that didn't really accomplish anything. So it's like, okay, well, is this new D and D movie going to have a part where they like have a rock shaped like a 20 sided dice? You know what I mean? Like, I hope yeah. not, but you never know. What are they going to do? Uh, did you guys watch the halo TV show? No, I didn't. No. I think it's crazy. They made one, but whatever. That That's like the, that's, that's a television show that I, I think that's the least appealing thing to me yeah. that I could imagine. It's yeah. like a Halo TV show. Yeah, I just don't want to... I don't watch a lot of, like, TV shows. I only watch movies lately, and it, it takes... As far as for a TV show I'm going to get into, like... Yeah, an original idea, it, like, generally not based on something. Although, I mean, my daughter and I watch all the, like, you know, Marvel shows and stuff. But, like, if I'm going to watch something... Like, the last show I watched, I didn't even finish it yet, was Squid Game. Squid Game's pretty cool, you know? Yeah, I, I finished that. I like that. Um, what if White as Kids had a reality show? I don't know. This is about That'd be as... weird. We, none of us, none of us are ever in the same room together. Yeah. Anymore, so <laughs> it would be just strange. be this. It'd be this, like, it'd be me, like, hey, Zach, Sam, Darren, did you guys eat my peanut butter? No, man, we yeah. live in we live in different states, and Darren's in different country. Fuck, I guess it was me. Like that's just every every situation. <laughs> Uh, Zach, do you like Picnic at Hanging Rock or the remake series? You know what? I have to confess. What is Picnic at Hanging Rock? Is that like an old Western that I should have seen? Yeah, yeah. Is it like a Peckinpah or something? I don't think. Is it Peckinpah? Mm, I can't remember. I'm sure it's Anyways, not. I'm it's just... some movie. It's some movie, an old movie. I haven't seen it either. I know there's a new show. Um, oh, it's an old horror? Is it? I don't know. I'm just going off what. In 1975, a Australian mystery film. Oh, it's directed by Peter Weir. Oh, Peter Weir. Mm-hmm. He's good. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So, and now that now it's a TV show, apparently. So. Okay. All right. I don't know anything about it. Well, that's I have a, a lot of. I have a lot of blind spots. I have a lot of gaps. Dude, me too. Someone. Um. <clears throat> oh, I was just uh, yesterday. I rewatched Phantom of the Paradise for the first time in a while. Have you ever seen that? Now wait a minute. That is the. Don't say that is a. Uh, um, fucking. De Palma's musical that Daft Punk based their entire thing off of, yeah, right? It was yeah. his response to Rocky Horror. Yep. Uh, it wasn't a success when it came out, but it became a huge cult classic. I have never seen it. How yeah, is that? I fucking love it. So I saw it really? for the first time a couple years ago, and I I bought it on Blu-ray. I watched it last night, and uh, yeah, it's really it's it's really great because it's weird. It's really weird. The music is good. It's Paul Williams. You know who that is? No. Short little blonde guy. And he did uh, the music for the first Muppet movie, which is like some of the best fucking movie music ever. You know, like I like he he wrote, uh, you know, uh, uh, what? Oh my god, my brain is so broken. The Rainbow Rainbow Connection. He wrote Rainbow Connection. You know what I mean? Like he wrote Moving Right Along. Is that the Why Are yeah. There Some? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, so he's like a musical genius. So he wrote the the stuff for it, and he plays the owner of this club. 
And then, uh, what's her name? Harper. Uh, I forget her first name. Jessica Harper from Suspiria plays like this lady trying out. But it's a story of the Phantom of the Opera, basically. And then it turns into um, Dorian Gray a little bit and Dante's Ooh. Inferno a little bit. But it's like, it's crazy. It's really funny. Uh, the... Uh, you know, the the Phantom character, the, the actor, William Finley, does a great job. And he only did a few things and then died. So, you know, this is like <clears> the <throat> only starring role he had. But it's it's awesome. And so I, I the reason I brought it up is because so I, I have a letterbox to count. And, and I really only started that so I could keep track of how many of the movies that I watch. So I, yeah, cool. I see. And I write little reviews. So I wrote that for that one. And uh, our friend Jordan Cooper and somebody else were like, have you seen much other De Palma? And I was like, I actually haven't. Like when I think about De Palma, I've seen that. Uh, Mission Impossible, The Untouchables, and Snake Eyes. Like, I haven't seen, and Jordan was like, you should see. I'm sure you've seen Scarface. Oh, yeah, that's him, too. Okay. I'm sure you've seen Carlito's Way. I've not seen Carlito's Way. Uh. But but Jordan was like, so you haven't seen any of his weird little pervy stuff? I'm like, no, I haven't seen any of his. Oh, like, you know, uh, well, you got to watch Dress to Kill. Right. you got to watch Sisters, and you got to watch Body Double. Body, Body Double. Double, put it at the top of your okay. list. That movie, oh, my God. I dude. saw part of that in college. You've seen Carrie. Like, Oh yeah, I've seen Carrie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But only recently. Only like last year. So. What'd you think of it? I liked it a lot. Um, I like the ending of the book. Have you seen Blowout? Yeah, but years ago in film school. Yeah, Blowout so is a masterpiece. That's a Travolta yeah. one, right? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's all those, and, and then Jordan says Femme Fatale is really good. So I don't know, but. Um, I've not seen that. That's the Rebecca Romaine one. Um. Wait. Somebody's asking. Have you seen Raw or Inside? So. Somebody's into the new French extremism. Uh, uh, yes, Inside is. I actually liked it. It is a. That's a hardcore movie. Inside, not for the faint of heart. And I liked Raw. I thought Raw was really good. Um, have you seen Titan, Timmy? No, I haven't seen any of these yet. So. Hmm. I'm, I just. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, but anyways, what do you? How's Titan? Because I hear a lot of people asking about it. It's it's good. It's um. It's very good. It's very like. I love anything that is like expertly done and in its own lane, like Gaspar Noé, like he makes these movies that are just so uniquely him. Right. Yeah, sure. And I feel like Titan might be kind of one of those movies where it's it's just like I don't no one else could make that movie. It's right. just yeah. like it's so it's such a unique vision. The performances are great. It's really weird. It's yeah, I thought it was great. It's it's fantastic. So, uh on that note, have you seen Mad God yet? I have seen Mad God. I have not seen the end. I'm watching it in ah, like spurts. It's hard. I, I know. To, it's hard to watch. All t- I wrote it's, it. It's, I, I really love it, but it. I have to stop every 15 minutes. I have yep, to be like, okay, take absolutely, a man, absolutely. I watched it the same way, and I finished it last week or something. But yeah, I watched it in like three or four. So it's not a long movie. It's only 85 minutes or something. But yeah, I watched it in, as like TV episodes almost. But uh, yeah, I loved it a lot. I think it's great. yeah, it's it's great. And there is, it's like you said, nobody else could do that. Phil Tippett. For Phil people Tippett, who don't know yeah. what the fuck we're talking about, Mad God is a stop motion horror movie. And it's made by Phil Tippett, who he made the walkers for Star Wars. He animated the Rancor. He helped uh, make the uh, dinosaurs for the first Jurassic Park. He uh, He's, like, fucking important in movies. And so all this time, the last 33 years, while he was becoming this big fucking deal in movies, he was also filming his own little weird fucking puppet movie in his garage or whatever. And he finally finished it. And it's on Shudder. And it's basically... I think the best way to explain it is it's an hour and a half long tool video, but it's so much better than that. Like, I, yeah, yeah. I feel like a tool video, a long tool video would annoy the shit out of me. And this one didn't annoy the shit out of me, you know, but, but it's like, there's some weird stuff. <laughs> there's some, yeah. the, the guys getting electrocuted and pissing and shitting into the tube that goes into the other guy's mouth. Like, wow. So. Clue Come Clan says, my uncle works at Jurassic Park. I like, I appreciate that comment. Uh, <laughs> is there a Guar doc on Shudder? I saw Guar. Uh-huh. Um, yes, there is. I saw Guar in like 2008, and I remember that they brought an effigy of Obama out, and they ripped his head off and threw it into the audience. And I remember at the time, I was like, I don't think this is cool. Like, I, I think I'm like not down with this. And then I learned like, no, they do that to every president. Yeah. You know, that's. It's nothing to do with Obama no. or, or like, it was just like, they it's, just kill the president. It's like, cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's pretty great. Okay, cool. So I saw them in summer 2007 and they had the Virginia Tech shooter. 
that that uh, that, oh. that Asian kid that shot at Virginia Tech a few months before that. They had that, and they did a very racist caricature voice of him, and then they cut his head off too, and he's spraying blood everywhere. So yeah, um, but that part is always kind of like okay, whatever. But besides that, Guar Show, I got pulled up to the front row for that fucking one of the best experiences of my life you know what i mean like yeah the slave guys with the dick shaped cannons shooting all the green blood everywhere yep i got sprayed by the dick Did you? and I, I wore oh, a yeah. white t-shirt on purpose i wore an all-white t-shirt on purpose yeah, yeah. and I, I i remember looking one of the slave pit guys in the eyes and i just said give it to me you know and he just sprays me in the face with the stuff and, yeah oh it was so much fun and then me and it was my friends blake and shandy afterwards we went and ate at uh a denny's and we go in there, we're like still stained green, like three fucking 20 yeah. year olds stained green. And de- it's like nine or 10 o'clock because we were at a festival. So it, was, it got done uh-huh. early. So so we go into this Denny's and the, <laughs> the lady's like, well, um, let me just go put you in the side room over here. And they opened up like, you know, a party room yeah. or something you don't normally use. You guys can sit by yourselves over there. But uh, that's awesome. But Guaris, that's a that's a terrific live show. Like, but yeah, the documentary I haven't watched yet. I've been meaning to. But I didn't know there was one. I'll check that out. It's a new one. Lydia Petunia show. says Zach is an emotophobia. Is there any trigger warning of puke scenes in your movie? It's funny. My wife is the same. Like, like truly, like. If there's a barf scene in a movie, Sarah, like, can't, she she can't handle it. She's really? Like, oh. She'll, like, blah, blah. she does a lot of this. I have to, like, tell her when it's over. Like, she, it's, like, her number one fear is, is vomit. She also hates roaches. But um, there is a puke scene in my movie, but it's after the puke has taken place. So it cuts and someone's, like, finishing. They're, like, ugh, ugh. There's, like, a couple of heaves, but it's not. So I think, and she watched it and she was okay. So I think it'll, I think it'll be all right. That's good. My, uh, um, Zach, my daughter's the same exact way. Uh, really she when i was when we were gonna watch knives out because she loves mysteries and she was actually reading some agatha christie at the time I'm like you'll love this movie but one of the main characters like it's her have you seen knives out yeah okay so like one of the main characters pukes it's like part of her character and so she was like oh so i said i just realized chat hasn't been on the screen this whole time let me make sure that's gonna work um Anyways, so I told her, uh, so what I did is I, she asked me to go look up all the times that it happened. So I like Googled all the like uh, time codes for the puke in Knives Out. And then I'm like, okay, it's coming up. She's like, okay, I'm going to go in the other room. I'm like, all right. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But so like, people put the time codes on the internet for like. Yeah, you can find that. Yeah, interesting. yeah you can find it. Interesting. So, um, but then we've been watching Stranger Things because I'd only ever seen season one and she kind of got interested. So we've been watching that. Mm-hmm. And that there's not a lot of, well, there's some puking in that, but she's starting to get like more okay with it, I think. So, yeah. You know. Oh, somebody says in here, uh, someone tells Zach's wife to watch Stand By Me. That's right, because I know there's a puke chain where they go to the pie eating contest and then oh, they get pukes yeah. and everybody starts puking. And it's funny, I was at dinner, Sarah and I went to dinner last night with a friend, and we were talking about how we need to watch Stand By Me. I forgot about the puke thing. <laughs> yeah. Got, so there's a there's a scene in this movie, John Dies at the End, where a character vomits and roaches come out of oh, his wow. vomit. And I was like, oh, man, this is... And I told Sarah, I was like, one day, Sarah, I'm going to show you a movie where a dude pukes and roaches come out. Just like, no, don't do it. And I was like, but it's going to be years from now. You're not going to know. We're just going to put it on, and you're just going to fucking... It's just going to get you. And I was like, <laughs> and like two years later, I put on John dies at the end. And like about 10 minutes in, we hadn't even gotten near the part. She was like, this is the movie where the puke and the, and the roaches come, isn't it? And I was like, how the fuck did you know? She has like radar. Like she knows wow, when it's coming. That is funny, man. Yeah. Uh, you, I haven't seen me. that movie, but I love I, Don Coscarelli made that movie. I love Don, Don Coscarelli. Coscarelli. And he wrote a book about, uh, but the, I've actually become friends with Chase Williamson, who's one of the one of the guys in John Dies. Oh, cool! He's I, uh, a really good writer. You see the guy. So that's based on a novel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I haven't read the novel, but I one time retweeted some. Oh, some dude! I love the Phantasm movies. I really love the first one, especially. And some guy on Twitter uh, a couple years ago had airbrushed his van to have the sweet phantasm like mural on it and i retweeted it phantasm and don coscarelli followed me and every once in a while he like likes my stuff and that's what yeah, i love cool. about twitter is like these random bill mosley too and it's like just these random fucking like cool people like you know you get to sort of interact with sometimes you know but yeah that's fun but uh, i love have you seen you've seen phantasm i'm sure right i've seen phantasm I love Phantasm. I actually just watched all five of them recently, but 
I have not made it through Phantasm Two. Uh, I should. I should. They're I cool. Haven't. They're they're good. Two is good. Uh, and three is good. Four gets a little bad. Five is not directed by him, and you know the effects aren't aren't there. But the cool thing about those movies, and the reason I like them, is they're they're kind of trippy, and a lot of dream logic kind of stuff. But except for the uh, except for the character Michael in in Phantasm Two. Everything else was played by the same guys for 40 years of, of these movies. Yeah, it's crazy. Know? And so that's awesome. And Reggie the Ice Cream Man, I'm realizing, I'm like, man, I guess that's what I want to look like when I'm older, right? Because he has a ponytail <laughs> and he's like, cool. Oh, God. You know? But he's yeah. also a, he's also an irascible hornball, so whatever. But, uh, yeah. Uh, are you guys also into horror video games? I am. I'm very excited for the the new Dead Space game. What is it called? Like Crypta, some some fucking thing. Cryo Spirit. I can't remember what it's called. But it's only coming out for Xbox. I don't have uh, a fucking Xbox. What? Like, God damn it. Is that Callisto because, Protocol? Thank you, Callisto Protocol. Is that because uh, Xbox owns Bethesda or something now? Is that why? I guess so. But does Bethesda put out? I have Dead no idea. Space? I, I have don't no think idea. so. Is it a Dead Space game? It's like in the Dead it's Space. It's like from the from the you know the creator of Dead Space. It looks like Dead Space. He probably lost the uh, rights to Dead Space or some bullshit. But uh, it, it look yeah. Right. Um, I haven't played a scary video game in a while. I love the Resident Evil games. I thought Resident Evil Seven was awesome, and I have eight. I bought it on sale on some download thing, but I've never played is it. Is that Village? Yeah. Is that the Village game? I couldn't get through it, man. Yeah. I, I started it and I got, I put a couple hours into it, and I was like, yeah, I'm just yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't dig it. Did you like Seven? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, seven's cool. I played the original one and two. I played Resident Evil Two is one of those games I got obsessed with uh, yeah. in like high school. The same way when I met you guys and I was obsessed with Vice City. That's how I was with Resident Evil Two. I got to the point where you can you can get to this point where you can play through a, a short version of the game as a as a piece of tofu holding a knife, and that was like the big secret thing to get wow. to. And Weird. I, yeah, I did it. And. Uh, that one and um but you know it was a fun game i didn't get i didn't play it through i didn't play a whole lot into it but when i had a when i streamed on twitch six seven years ago under my own channel i was i streamed alien isolation like a bunch in october that's a great game that's a Dude, really so really good. excellent game did you have yeah. it set up so that it could hear you if you talk like if you talk yeah, in the room? Yeah, dude, you can no. have it. I had it set up with like connect and I'm fucking streaming so I'm talking to people and I like say like, oh shit, I don't know, like uh, answering a question. Why or would something. that be a feature? I love it, man, because you're hiding from the alien, right? So then oh it hears God. you and, it, and then you see it first person so you see the tail come through your chest and I'm like, That's oh shit. Ridiculous. It was so That's much really fun, funny. man. It was really fun. Oh, you know what You know what it was? Is So one of my nieces, one of my brother's daughters, was born while I was streaming, and she was born like two months early. So I'm like on the phone, be like, "Is she okay?" And then the alien kills me. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! So yeah, they're like, "She's fine," and you're like, "Oh god, no!" Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dana says, "Zach, samurai or astrologer? Go well if you're trying to do a battle mage, go astrologer. But samurai is fucking awesome, and then you can get the rivers of blood sword if you're a samurai. I mean, you can get that whoever, but." Rivers of Blood Sword is one of the two best weapons in the game, in my opinion. So, I don't know. It's your call. Sorry, Timmy. No, that's okay. Um, uh, that's uh, I was done with that story. Uh, <laughs> someone was asking. Oh, so someone was saying like we should get Timmy a PS5 or a new Xbox. No, no, no. Here's the thing, man. Is like I have this great new computer, and it's obviously working for streaming. Why would I hold this up? But it's was that a condom? No. Was that like a busted condom? Me? No. It's a, <laughs> it's a hair tie. There's hair ties. All over everything I own now. What if you just have like used condoms, like kind of around your house? It's like Timmy, are you jizzing and leaving condoms? Yeah, everywhere? dude, my daughter. Do you have at, a daughter in there? Yeah, well, she's at her mom's for the weekend, so it just yeah, I can, I horrible, can come wherever I want. Horrible bachelor pad for like thirty six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sundays at like three thirty because I get her back at four. It's like, oh god, oh god, just scrubbing everything. <laughs> Getting all the pubes and come out. No, but having long hair for years now, it's like there's just fucking, there's uh, every pocket of every shirt, every drawer has hair ties in it. It's just everywhere because I'm, I'm an issue. But so uh, what I was getting at is like, don't buy me things to play video games because I got this computer that people help buy and I really appreciate it. And, and it does help out for a lot of stuff and we're streaming on it right now. But I play like Doom 64. That's what I've been streaming. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
<laughs> I just am not, I don't have the brain that gets the, the big hot games all the time, you know? So, I don't know. What was the last current game that you were really into? Well, actually, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, so that wasn't that far. That wasn't that long. Yeah, yeah. That was only a few months ago. Well, I have Elden Ring. I, I thought that game was too short. Yeah, I'm hoping the it wasn't DLC, big enough. I hope the DLCs are better, but uh, it was, it's fun, man. They had a good uh, that whole gearbox shooter RPG mechanic. They've really got that yeah. well down, and I really loved uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, so you can mix the classes and stuff. So there's so many combinations, and you know, um, it's a lot of fun. But uh, I like old games too, you know. So did you find what's it, neon white? Neon white. I don't know. Where did that? Did somebody say something then? Um, yeah, I, I I feel like I need to. Uh, I think I'm almost to the point where I'm ready to get into Elden Ring again. You know? I'm oh yeah, Streaming man. video games again. I'm gonna get into some donos though. We got some more. Hold on and hang on. Donate ten bucks. Says hello, dapper gents. Traveling for a wedding and gonna see barbarian in Dallas. We'll try to stop shaking by the time we greet the couple. <laughs> All <laughs> Love right. Your Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. And uh, Zach's two gallon jug of spin drift donated 10 bucks. It says, I'm so excited to see Barbarian. My fiance and I saw the pre screen. It was so wild when Justin Long came on. But if it was that other guy who was looking inside the audience, when you hear what he says, okay, there is so much come. What? Um, <laughs> I don't understand what that says. Then he says, I don't get that either. Absolute All classic right. five stars. And then Simon donated $50. It says, can't wait, can't wait for Barbarian and Mars. Thanks for keeping up with self self suck and other streams, dudes. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, thank you, Simon. Thank very, you so much. Very appreciated, uh, everybody, and everybody subscribing. I'll get to you guys too. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've been watching more movies. Wait, someone said about they're gonna go to an air show with their dad. Says, "Fuck, my dad wants me to go watch a bunch of." Play Why am I always reading Danis nine oh seven? What? I don't know. I, I, I gotta I stop reading this guy. Every time I, uh, I look up, I'm like looking at his comments let me or hers. This, uh, I'm going to get the chat back up because of the chat thing on my Somebody phone. Somebody says, go shitty. see Nope. Timmy, did you see Nope? Yeah, yeah. We talked about it a little bit. We talked about it. We talked about it. And you saw it, obviously. I did. Wait, I you, did. you got to go to the fancy version. You got to go to the I premiere. went to the I went to the premiere. Ooh, big boy. Ah. Playing with the big Ooh. boys. Um, hey. Hey. Yeah. Uh, it, it's cool. I really liked it. You know, I think the more I sit with it, the more I enjoyed it. I haven't seen it again yet, but, you know. I definitely am uh, excited to watch it again. Yeah. Um. Well, and when is Matt's coming out? I think you mean Mars. I we don't know. I've got uh, back here. I've got some gym mats. Those are gym mats. Um, sorry, bad joke. Uh, but I, I think when it comes to Nope, and I told you this, and I was just telling Nate this when we, Nate was helping me set this up tonight. Um. Uh, when it comes to movies like Nope or like a Marvel movie for me anyways or you know stuff like that where there's a lot of anticipation I almost like need to see it once just to burn the anticipation out I know I know um, what you mean sometimes I have the same thing where it's like I can't even have an objective experience right. of a movie Be yeah because what is it okay for Nope it's like okay what is this movie actually about and I need to get I need to figure that out before I even know what I'm looking at yeah. and with uh, Marvel movies for me it's like I go in like, what other characters are going to show up? Because I'm just a fucking simp that way, you know? But, uh, <laughs> oh, man. but you know, so I need to, like, get burned that out and then figure out that, oh, okay, it wasn't that great most of the time, but some of them are really good, but, you know. Uh, but, so, yeah, I, I definitely want to see it again. And, uh, but, yeah, it, I, I'm just so glad. I mean, Jordan Peele has, you know, his, his with Get Out, like, there's something really happened with people being able to, like, make cool horror movies on a big budget, you know? and Yeah. I, I, I honestly think I wouldn't have been able to make Barbarian if uh, Jordan hadn't made it. Oh, I 100% agree. I, I, think, yeah. I think you're... He really opened right. the door to making, like... By the way, look at these. These are fun. Uh, intelligent, uh, grown-up horror movies again. Right. So, wait. W this is the poster that's out, but then at Comic-Con, this is, this is kind of fun. We got this one with Bill. Oh, cool. Which is cool. And... This one with Justin. Nice. Pretty cool. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll sell some of these to raise some money for Mars. I'll oh sign yeah, them. sign them and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. How do we do that anymore? It's like 
I don't remember what we did. I don't remember how to fucking get that shit going. I, I have a good amount, though, so I could just sell, like, I won't even charge too much money, but, like, yeah. I randomly started watching a stream from about a year and a half ago, and it was around the time we had sold the sexy fawn outfit to that guy or something. Oh, that was such a fucking disaster. I was so pissed. <laughs> and that's all we It was the one, it was the one where Trevor had the green screen behind him, and we, was, and we were on the front page that night, and he had, like, like these... It wasn't cleavage, but it was like just a, a woman's breast in a shirt uh -huh. behind uh -huh. him. And we kept wondering if that was going to be a problem or not when we went on the front page. And then he just replaced it with uh, a all black and just said a pink letter sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's so classic Trevor. Oh, it is. And, yeah. and, and he spent like 45 minutes getting that set up like while yeah, we were streaming. Yeah. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> ah, just classic. Yeah. Um, people are asking if we're going to stream next weekend. I, I guess, I mean, I feel like we should do something. Wait, what? what? Oh, because is that yeah, the yeah, anniversary yeah, yeah, of his yeah, yeah. death? Oh, my God. I know, right? Yeah, we should. What should we do, though? Um, uh, bring a lot of Kleenex. Like, yeah, do we just watch a bunch of Trevor's funny moments? I think so, something like that. But Well, you know what would be cool? If we could spend the time between now and then. Uh, we'll watch some funny, some of our favorite Trevor sketches, but also maybe find some of our favorite Trevor, like stream stuff. You know, like yeah, like I've mentioned. I can't go through it yet. Yeah. I'm just, I can't go through and well, like make that's why we have. Maybe we can make Nate do it. <laughs> Nate, will you do our emotional labor for us? Yeah. <laughs> Not just emotional labor, but labor that is emotional. <laughs> Because, yeah, but I, I, you know, there, there's some stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, because people have been asking, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. But, uh, uh, yeah. you know, it's something we're, we're definitely aware of it. And <laughs> uh, it's something we will uh, we'll see what we can do, you know. A watch party for Miss March. Oh, sweet Lord. Hey, I, that brings up an interesting question. So, uh, St. Maud, that lady that directed that um, won Best First Feature for the uh, the Chainsaw Awards last year, the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. Now, is that something you would be eligible for, or does Miss March mean that Barbarian is your second feature? No, I I I I, I truly consider Barbarian my first feature because okay. Trevor and I co-directed right. Miss March. Um, I guess you could you know people could find issue with my my position there, but I, this is the first movie I've ever written and directed by right. myself. It's yeah. my first movie. So. I think I would count that as your first feature. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, <laughs> I don't know. And, yeah, uh, but I, I somebody on Reddit was was trying to was 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 taking an issue with it. I did a, like a little interview where I was talking about this uh, as my first movie, and somebody somebody didn't agree. But uh, I don't know. But you know, I mean, Miss March was like. I mean, I know you guys like rewrote the script and stuff, but that was kind of something that you guys were put into like a package and it happened. Yeah, very much so. You know, yeah. and this is like you had something you wanted to do and you fucking did it. And so I feel like, yes, this is like your first feature, you know, like. Yeah, thank you. That's how I feel. What's up, twerking? How are you? Like if I ever get another um, TV show, I'll say this is my first TV show because the other yeah. one was practice. <laughs> Somebody says, what about Civil War on Drugs? Well, again, that Trevor and I co-directed that. Yeah. That was very much a whitest kids thing. I just don't, right. it's, it's not the same. And it's a, we shot it like with the TV show too. So it's kind of a, yeah, it was part of the animal, series. You know? Yeah. It's not even really a, it's, yeah. Well, Caleb says it doesn't matter though. First or second, who cares? Well, yeah, but I was just, the only reason I brought up is because of uh, an award, another director won. I just kind of yeah. thought it was an interesting question. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, somebody says, Zach, is Barbarian playing in Mexico? I believe it is playing in Mexico and South America, I believe. Cool. Not Europe, unfortunately. Weird. Which is a frustr or, or Asia. Huh. Yeah, like globally, I think they're only doing North and South America. Um, I hope they do Australia and England. I, yeah. I, I know, but I, I don't know if they are. Well, what about uh, Argentina? We have a lot of fans in Argentina. I think, we, I think, it, should do, I think it should do Argentina. Yeah, someone says, why not Europe? You goddamn filmed it there. Yeah! <laughs> I know. That's a great point. I I, I don't know. Oh, here's an entry. Ken Lango says, what brands are your shirts? Uh, oh. Mine is that one that, that Target has, because I got this at Target. Goodfellows or something? I think mine's Uniqlo. Oh. I believe. Dude, they made Europe. some good t-shirts. <laughs> Did they? Yeah, they're comfortable because uh, yeah, it's soft. One of the points, uh, one of the seasons of Whitest Kids, our uh, wardrobe department got a bunch of Uniqlo stuff, mm. and uh, I don't know. I ended. I think I still have a pair of pants or a shirt or something from them. Yeah, that's a, a well-made, 
random stuff. I am like the worst with clothes now, man. Yeah. I feel like for the last seven years, I just like, especially, you know, especially since the pandemic, I dress like a fucking idiot. All my clothes don't fit me. I just like, I, I, I'm just, I don't know, man. I, I, I gotta get my shit I together, man. Cause you one time years ago, you one, I once heard you refer to yourself as a clothes horse. Like you were somebody that was actually like interested in. I used to care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. I did used to care. When I lost a bunch of weight four, four years ago, I bought a bunch of clothes and now I'm too fat again. And so I have like six shirts. You know, so <laughs> yeah. it's like I don't want to go buy more shirts because I really want to stop being fat. I feel like if yeah. I if I like buy more shirts of this size, I'm just enabling myself, you know, but I don't know. I'm also realizing like at 42, it's like I have so many shirts that are like punk band shirts that I've just kind of acquired over my whole life. And then uh. it's like I actually am starting to hit that point where I feel a little dumb walking around <laughs> like I'm 42 and I'm wearing a shirt about the fucking, you know. Yeah this band it's like nobody gives a fuck what a 42 year old white dude listens to why am i why do i think this is like buying me any cred right. whatsoever well, but it's the just thing like, is, is if you like the shirt though if you I still do. like and, the band then you should wear it yeah you know? and I, it's not that i don't wear them because i don't have any other fucking clothes but like i i just feel like it's like i don't know at a certain point you have to just be like all right i'm not i i'm not cool anymore yeah you know exactly. cool's done I, I, that ship has sailed for me yeah i'm just gonna be a fucking weirdo i feel like trevor did that way early where trevor realized really early on he was like i'm not cool i'm just gonna be weird yeah. and it's like that's cool yeah that's cool he did and that at like 12. yeah, <laughs> yeah he did which is actually the coolest hat. thing you on could scraps. ever do he had the hat on yeah 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 and, and yeah, so, yeah. so i uh talk about t-shirts you know my thing as you know used to be like i had a lot of silly animal t-shirts and silly thrift store t-shirts and like you know, when we were still maybe in our 30s, whenever I would talk to Trevor or, or see him somewhere, he'd be like, I'd have one of those shirts on. He'd be like, you're still doing that? <laughs> he said that. He said, you're still doing that? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But like, oh, man. I don't have any of those anymore. I have like a couple of Marvel or Star Wars t-shirts, but now I'm like, in the, like, I think I, I, I think I'm like a fat dad in his 40s wearing a Marvel or Star Wars t-shirt is not weird that's uh we all do that you know what i mean so it doesn't really matter it's not cool though it's not cool no 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 no. i would never <laughs> dude i don't do anything cool i don't even know when the last time i was cool even when i was in a punk band it was a punk ska band like i don't Yo, do not cool anything Timmy. cool not cool it's like, yeah yeah i i, I uh, was in a band and we drove around to van did shows and i even wrote some of the music for it what'd you play ska oh oh boy <laughs> You know what I remember? I don't know if you remember this, but I pitched for forever for us to do a Whitest Kids movie about that we were a ska band from South Dakota. Remember this? <laughs> and I really wanted to do it. Nobody was down, but what? I was like, we're a ska band. We're on tour in every city we go. Like, nobody likes us. And then we go play this one city in, like, the middle of Iowa in, like, some town that we've never heard of. And we go to play this, like, you know, VFW hall or something yeah. like that. And in this one town, it's packed with people <laughs> like somehow know all of our songs and we're treated like gods and we don't know why. <laughs> and we're like, and it gets creepy and, and it turns into a horror movie. You know, I, and I was like, that, that would have been such a fun whitest kids movie. Was but, I not like, on board? Nobody with liked it. I wasn't, I didn't like it. I don't know. I don't remember anybody giving me any support. I brought this up like again and again and again. I was Weird. like, this is a horror movie, but nobody was down. I uh I would do it now for sure. And then what we could do is get the guys that were in my actual ska band to play like our rivals or something, you know. But they're, yeah. they're not actors. Maybe one of them would do it. But uh, uh yeah. But so someone asked me, is Catch Twenty Twenty ska or no? Because they're good. And that actually brings up an interesting point because all the ska bands I like, like to me. They use ska in their music, and it's not like necessarily a ska band. You know what I mean? Like mixing it with other stuff. But now we're talking about ska. We don't need to do that. So, <laughs> uh, does your daughter like Aquabats? Killer DLS. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever listened to that around her. That's I, good. That's. I good. definitely play some of the old stuff I liked around her, uh, but not that one. I never really liked them too much. Um, Mr. Mr. Bungle did some good ska bits in their music. Says Warsaw X. Sure. I agree. That yeah. first Mr. Bungle album yeah. has they're they're kind of almost a ska band, yeah, sure. and they that album is fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that's how not, it works. not all ska is bad. No, no, I no. Mean, but it's it's the bands that like you know were just kind of either trying to get in on the thing when it was cool for that one summer, or uh, you know that are just kind of 
half-assing it to be part of it. Operation better. Ivy. I fucking love fucking Operation fantastic. Ivy. I fucking love yeah. that band. That's a ska band. That's I don't like the late... Yeah, it's the real big fish yes. era yeah. of ska that I find repulsive. Yeah, and um, when I was in a ska band, we consistently talk shit on bands like that. I would tell yeah. kids not to skake. I'd be on stage with my saxophone and kids are skanking. I'd be like, don't do that, please. <laughs> And then you'd be like, pick it up, pick it up. Right, no, but we didn't do that. We were like, we we had a, a, a bit of a heavier sound. I mean, we did do ska parts, but when we did, what, the other parts were like kind of heavier and almost metal sometimes because uh, that's the good stuff. It's, uh, Blue Meanies, uh, for me, uh, some of their songs don't even really even have ska in them. And their, their live album, he has a speech about it. He's like, this is just music. Stop trying to, you know. Uh, label it but like that's when that's to me when i those are the bands that i got into and so it's so funny when it's like a lot of the ska shit that people attribute when we're making fun of how i like ska which is totally cool to do and i deserve it uh but like all that shit is i was making fun of that when we were in a ska band you know what i mean like yeah. all that imagery was just like you know like yeah hated it like we were into op ivy fucking awesome uh you know Link it's Aiden, funny though so timmy the turtle says Pick it up and skanking was Operation Ivy's whole shtick, though. And I know, I know that. Right. But, but for whatever reason, in like when they did it, it wasn't 1987. That's the problem. It was like yeah, 1987. It was 87. They're like one of the yeah. only people that were doing it, you know, like yeah. that style. Like they took the stuff that the specials were doing and upped the punk bit of it a notch. And, you know, it's like that it was new music, you know. So. I also agree that Leftover Crack and Choking Victim rule. And I don't know why, but they just do. Because it just feels like. You know what I, th I think it's because like it feels like it's made by a dude who is an actual crackhead psychopath and it <laughs> right. just happens to be in, a, in like a punk ska band well, and it's good. I think any time, a, a lot of reason the, uh, those bands sucked is because it didn't feel like they wanted to actually do that. It's like the same problem I have with like Christian rock. It's like they're just trying to do it. That's not really the music coming out of them. They yeah, are trying exactly. to make it. It's not authentic. Music. Yeah, it's not authentic. Yeah. There's the word. Thank you. Yeah. And But with some guys like... Like us, because we're a bunch of kids that listen to it, so we like. Well, this is like this is who we are. This is the this is the music we're making when we hang out and jam, you know. And I think that's, yeah. you know, the bands that where it came out of that is, are are a lot better. You know what I mean? Killer CBH says the Trent Reznor sketch made fun of Nine Inch Nails, and you guys like them. Yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, you should always make fun of stuff you like. I mean, yeah. I, I've been dissing Scoff. Uh, right here and I fucking love it. I still listen to it. I had a mixed CD in my van today and I forgot that I put this on there years ago but Alkaline Trio came up and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I, I didn't even like them that much back in the day but I saw Alkaline Trio before they were big. They were like in South Dakota in a basement show opening for a, a, a ska band from Missouri. So, yeah, anyways... Um, what was the so my buddy Ryan, who's one of my best friends, he and my younger brother were in a ska band in DC called the Triffids. <laughs> this is like a long time ago. Oh, they played with this band, the Decepticons, a lot. But I, the band that they worshipped, it wasn't Mustard Plug. It was, but it had an M, and it was a ska band. Oh, this is gonna drive me fucking crazy. Mu three thirty. Mu three thirty. Dude. I gotta get. They some were they were that. really into that band. I'm obsessed with them, and I, I think we talked about this before. I'll be right back. I have there's MU330 Watertown shit to talk about. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Um. Oh, people like them. All right. Okay. What else, guys? What do we talk about while Timmy's doing his thing? Can you give life advice for people turning thirty? Ooh, baby. Um. Nothing is a big deal. Everything that you worry about happening probably won't happen. Other shit will happen. Chill out. There you go. Um, Zach, did you play Stray yet? No, I do want to play Stray. I want to play cool. Stray too. I've heard yeah. about it. I think my daughter's going to make me buy it because she keeps talking about it. She's like, it looks really cool. I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, it looks cool. Uh, yes, I do know Russian circles. I don't really like them so much though. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not into that. Like, I associate them with like explosions in the sky mogwai pelican like that kind of stuff i just i don't know it doesn't do it for me so much but I've sorry into that it's just me it's just me so mb 330 is from missouri and uh they were the ba they were we are all obsessed with that band i think they're fucking awesome and so <laughs> they're on asian man records and uh tre uh uh 
Jackson, the kind of leader of our group, I almost called him Trevor because I like equate how whitest kids operated like a band. Anyway, so Jackson wrote them and was like, hey, he, he wrote the label and email was like, we want to get them to play Watertown. And they were like, okay. And so they came and they played and even 20, 30 years later, whenever any of us runs into them or talks to them, they remember Watertown. And uh, uh, my mom and uh, our guitar player's mom made them dinner and they were vegetarian, which you don't get a lot of vegetarians out here. So like my mom and this other mom, like, looked up how to make vegetarian lasagna for them. (laughs) But uh, a couple years ago, I was trying to get a ska podcast together with some friends, and we had a live video thing on YouTube. I remember that. We had Dan uh, Pothast from through 30 on, and he's just... He's just the best fucking dude. And so that's one of those things where it's like, that's the music he loves to make. And that's what, you know, he's one of those guys that he's just is going to be playing Scott till he's dead. It's because that's what he loves to do. And so skanking into the grave, baby. Yeah. That's and, and, his and, and, and MU's 330 is another band where it's like they mix it with kind of this like almost old school kind of rock and roll punk kind of uh, Ramonesy kind of punk. And uh, I just, I think they were just, they were the best. Um, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I agree with being obsessed with them. So that's that's that. Uh, I did listen to the Chad Piles new album. Uh, I don't think Chad Piles is for me. Sorry, bruh. Um, Somebody says, if Whitest Kids were banned, what instruments would they play? And we can answer this. I think we've answered this before, but we do know the answer, or at least in one format, because one time we did a live show, and then we took an intermission, and then we came back, and we had instruments, and we played the DuckTales theme. I played piano, right? Mm-hmm. You played piano. You sang. I was the singer. Darren was drums. Sam was bass? Yeah, and Trevor was guitar, I Trevor think. Trevor was guitar. Uh-huh. Life is like a mystery. What a good um, song. Great song. One of the best. One <laughs> of the best. They don't make them like that anymore. Did you ever find yourself saying that now that we're getting old? about no. stuff okay because no. i do but it's it's kind of explaining stuff to my kid and be like yeah they don't really do that for cartoons anymore you know they have like a silly theme song misfits please talk misfits oh, man, oh man. okay misfits fuck yeah i i think that the misfits is a, a miraculously good band when danzig was in the Misfits. When right. he left, then I, I don't care about yeah, them yeah. anymore. But yeah. uh, my, I mean, I, I look, I fucking love the Misfits. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Um, they were, yeah, crazy. Although, do you know the story about them in San Francisco and their no. infamous, infamous show? So they, they were in the '80s when they were just starting. You know, they were like really young. Right. They were like, uh, they, they kind of like hit it big when they were like 18, 19, and 17. And wow. I think that like uh, Dwayne, I think his name was, I can't remember fucking everyone's name, but um, they were on tour and they got into San Francisco and they played this club. I think they might have played with the Dead Kennedys, but I'm not sure. I'm going to get a lot of these details wrong, but I'm going to get the important details right. Um, they were playing this really rowdy show. And in San Francisco, the punk scene was very scrappy and very, like, uh, not flamboyant. You know, not right. very theatrical, I believe. Gutter punk. And so the Misfits come. Doyle, thank you. Uh, misses come on. And, you know, they would, like, dress up. And they yeah. would wear, like, eyeliner yeah. and, you know, like, chokers thing. and fishnets and shit like that. And um, and you got the thing you got to understand about the, about the Misfits is that they were actually fucking psychos. Like they were very <laughs> legitimately like violent, mean people. And they're playing uh, this concert in San Francisco. The crowd is not into it. People are fucking throwing shit at them and going nuts. And Doyle, who at the time was like absolutely jacked, like huge muscle, right? Like, yeah, fucking yeah, Doyle, yeah, 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 yeah. He took his bass. And he took it off and he swung it into the crowd and hit this random like 17 year old kid in the face and like, like broke his fucking face, like Jesus. broke his, like shattered his jaw, knocked out his teeth, like wrecked this kid. The whole fucking crowd like rushed the stage. It turned into a giant melee riot. They had to, <laughs> they, they fought the entire audience and yeah, they were all fucking jacked. And um, it was like, Glenn Danzig says it was like, actually like the darkest day of his whole life like they wow. like they like put this kid in the fucking hospital for a long time Oof. and they were they were chased out of san francisco and they they weren't able to go back to san francisco ever as the misfits because the whole city was like we'll fucking kill you <laughs> and he came back i believe it was with sam hayne many years later and he had to like 
he had to like do some atoning with people like in San wow. Francisco. I'm really sorry that happened. I really regret it. It's really nuts, man. Yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, you gotta be nice to people at your shows. <laughs> the punk scene back in the eighties was so different. Like LA and San Francisco were at war with each other. So yeah. then the misfits came down to Los Angeles and all the LA punks were like, it's fucking awesome. We heard you guys like wrecked them up there. It's like, wow. So- so weird, man. Gangster um, Rap stole their whole thing. Gangster Rap got their whole thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Vicky and Pop yeah, the like, Danzig oh. movie is supposed to be hilariously bad. I think it's called Veronica. Veronica, it's I on Shutter. I watched it. It's, a, it's an anthology movie, and it's on Shutter, and I've been meaning to watch it. It's on Shutter? Yeah, it's been on there, because, I mean, no one else wants it, so I'm sure. I got to watch that Shutter shit, probably man. got it for, like, 10 bucks, you know? So they're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, King of Longing says, Zach, do you like Boren under Club of Gore? I fucking love Boren under Club of Gore. Good call, dude. Is that dude. a band? It's, it's evil, slow jazz music. <laughs> it's just like, doom. I want But it's just like, that. it's like menacing saxophone and bass, and just like, just... Totally evil and totally calm. It's really interesting that's, stuff. I, I love feel it. like that's the kind of shit Miles Davis was working his way towards. Like jazz. Well, like, I, I sound maintain like jazz. Bitches Brew is like an evil yeah. record. Hell it's yeah, very it's fucking awesome. sinister. Very yeah. cool. Uh, somebody asked about did have you did you guys ever see G.G. Allen? Well, I've never seen him play live. We are aware. I mean, of no, he was dead by the right. time I was like He's, ten. Yeah, right? yeah, totally. No, I never but saw uh, him. when we were when my ska band was recording our album, we were uh, recorded at this. Uh, place in minneapolis where the breeders had recorded and some other cool bands and uh we were in the waiting room while you know working on stuff there the only movie they had on vhs was uh hated the gg allen documentary. i love that movie and we watched it like a bunch and uh jj marvin is based on gg allen yeah. and uh when we wrote that sketch i remember some of the other guys didn't know who we were talking about but you and me were like yeah gg allen you know so i can love it yeah somebody says how about dystopia i love dystopia i saw dystopia in dc at food not at food for thought fucking dino great shit um anyway we're, we're getting a little we're losing people here i'm sure Are but we? uh what yeah. about uh, someone said? Well, okay, this is more about comedy. Someone said, "Have you heard H. John Benjamin's jazz album?" I didn't know he had one. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Does he sing on it? I can see him being a good singer. I don't know how I feel, dude. H. John Benjamin and John Glazer, those guys, they just like. I have some. I have some like hang up about those guys, especially John Glazer. I just don't think they're nice. Like, they just were not like nice to us. Right. And I've and only- John Glazer especially has this like senior being a dick to the freshman kind of a yeah. vibe and i was just like fuck this guy like i just not i didn't i don't know there's, man. A, there's a few of those guys from that you know i guess uh, so to speak graduating class of comedy you know uh who i felt like when we we're part of like the next generation in new york in the mid 2000s that they kind of were weird to us sometimes but most of them that's we're not talking shit here most of them most were nice like todd berry was so nice todd to berry us, loves us. that guy was the best he like messaged me when he heard about trevor you know that guy's uh and, and that's 20 years later you know and he's still like yeah. he, he's a great guy mark Marin was always cool to us uh Odenkirk, I've only briefly met, but I've heard he likes us. You know, like there's a lot of cool guys like that. The, the most of them are awesome. You know, but it's easier, you know, to remember the dicks sometimes. And the, you know, <laughs> it's it easier is. to remember. It the is to remember, dicks. To remember the dicks. Yeah. Uh, some Abby Sally says nicest celebrity you've worked with. Uh, oh, for me, that's easy. Alfred Molina, man. What you nicest guy with? on the fucking planet? Was he on Wrecked? What? Was he on Wrecked? No, no, I did a pilot with him. I did a pilot. It was me and Kristen Ritter and Alfred Molina. It was like he played, he played, this is so funny. He played Harvey Weinstein and (laughs) Kristen and I played his assistants. He wasn't really called Harvey. He had a different name, but it was was written by Leslie Headland, who went on to create Russian Doll. Right. And she used to be Harvey Weinstein's um, assistant. And so she wrote like a play about her experience working with him. And then they turned that into a pilot. So Kristen Ritter and I were the two assistants. Um, and now, Kristen, you've known for a long time, right? I've known Kristen forever. Yeah, yeah. so she doesn't count with, with Zach as a celebrity. So, Al, so you'd say Alfred? That guy is the. He's so nice; it's insane. Yeah. Like, and there's something really charming about old British men. He, he would always call me darling, which is, <laughs> I just thought was like I was like that is so fucking. Different. I'd be like, I'd be like, Alfred, can I ask you a question? I'd be like, yes, darling. That's just like, <laughs> so fun. He is he is great, man. That guy's the best. I uh I shot a Target ad with Maria Bamford. She was really awesome, and they cut my face out of it. I, I think I told you guys this story. But this is when I lived in Portland. Uh, Target shot a lot of their ads out there because the agency, the ad agency, 
that they use as base out of there. And so I got cast at a target ad. Okay, awesome. And uh, like a day or two before uh, the shoot, they called me and I'm like, hey, uh, I have facial hair. Do I need to shave? They're like, no, nah, no, you don't need to shave. I'm like, you sure? No, nah, you, don't, you don't need to shave. Okay, cool. So I show up and I have a, like a goatee and like the target people are like, we don't put beards in target ads, which I, I surely they've changed it now because beards are cool again now, but this is like 12, 13 years ago. And uh, so I was like, oh, do you need me to shave? They're like, no, no, no. <laughs> so then I finally see the commercial. It ran like during Black Friday and stuff, right? So I'm like, cool, you know? And they just completely cut my face out of it. And uh, I think I had one line, but you see it. It's like off off screen. <laughs> they CGI your <laughs> beard away. It's like, it's like you guys, I could have, like, I didn't even have much. I could only grow right here. I, I forgot so, you were in a Target ad. I guess that makes two of us. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. you were in one a long time ago, though. With Kristen Ritter. That's how I met her. We were in Is the that same really Target. Is that how you met her? Oh, okay. In like 2001, yeah, we were in a Target ad. Holy shit. Together. That was yeah, yeah. a long time ago. She did, uh, she was so great on Breaking Bad, being that kind of conniving, like, I don't know, schemey. She was very scheming on that show, you know? <laughs> right? Like, don't, well, yeah, she was yeah. also kind of being taken advantage of a little bit, I guess, but, you know. Not really. But, I don't think so. Well, she was kind of taking advantage of Jesse. I can't remember it's been a bit, but, and I think she did a great job uh, as uh, Jessica Jones, too, but, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, people were, were saying, like, oh, Doc Ock, because you mentioned Alfred Molina. And to me, it's still the fucking Indiana Jones guy, though. That's, like, cemented. Oh, yeah. And, well, to me, I feel like the best the best Alfred Molina is Boogie Nights. Right. Oh, God, yeah. I always forget that that's him. Fucking greatest. That scene, dude, oh, the, the, the best. tension in that scene is fucking Amazing. insane. Uh, how uh, how, how amazing is Paul Thomas Anderson? Just the greatest. I haven't seen Licorice Pizza, and you know I've always been wondering. You haven't seen it? No, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I what just, are you doing? Uh, nothing. Why, why not? I just didn't get around to it. it. It came out in the theater at a time when I really didn't want to see a romantic anything at all, and then mm. uh, and then it went away pretty quickly because it's South Dakota. I don't think we're really interested in a movie that people were like, "There's no explosions, and there's no Kevin James." You know, so, uh, that's kind of how it works. Like, you know what's really funny, man, is when I had Movie Pass, I saw everything in our theater, and I went and saw Darren Aronofsky's mother. It was here for like one week, mm. and it was me in the theater and two old people, and it was like nine o'clock on a Monday night, and I enjoyed it. It's a really fucking crazy movie. I, I enjoyed it, you know. And uh, but these two other people were like, what? Like what? <laughs> like, I, I get that. I mean, that's a fair reaction to have to that movie. Pretty, it is a weird, it's challenging. It's pretty crazy. Movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I I texted Sam after I saw it. I remember Sam said, "Man, that guy." Re Sam's whole review of of Mother was, "Darren Aronofsky sure does love the Bible." And I was like, "Yeah, like he's really into like Bible shit, you know?" Like, he is, isn't he? Mm -hmm. But like, not because he's like, I don't think he's super religious, but because he's no, fascinated so. by what the Bible is, which is a really, yeah. really old book written at a time when politics were different. People's mindsets were different. There's a lot of fucking crazy stuff in the Bible, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, how he, uh, I just saw a thing the other day that I didn't notice because I've only seen Noah the one time, but uh, apparently all the animals in that movie, they were slightly, they're CGI and they were slightly changed to not quite resemble any real species. All the animals? Apparently. That's what I read. I have not seen that movie. I haven't seen The Fountain. I haven't seen Noah. I saw The Fountain Noah. alone in New York. Uh, like one in the afternoon I just went to a movie. It was great. But yeah, Noah's good? cool. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I feel like I couldn't make much sense of it. But uh, uh, Noah is cool because like a lot of that literal, literal Bible translation stuff. So when there's angels in Noah, they're like these big rock creatures. Because apparently in that part of the Bible, that's kind of how they're described in some translations and so it's huh. a giant rock monster with nick nolte's voice being like hey, i gotta build a boat you know <laughs> interesting so, yeah it's really weird man and like noah turns into a fucking like psycho it's almost got a little bit of a slasher movie vibe in one part because noah thinks god's telling him to kill one of his children so but it's an interesting idea because uh, you know if you if there's a guy a, who thinks god told him to spend 40 years building a boat if God then tells him to kill somebody, like, he's going to do it. That guy is clearly on board with doing whatever the voice is telling him to do, you know? Maybe you, yeah. could, maybe you could pair that with St. Maud, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like people who think, and I was thinking about that a lot 
watching that movie is like, what would I pair that with? Uh, I think for First Reformed would be an interesting double feature with St. Maud, the one with Ethan Hawke in it. Mm-hmm. Is that what that's called? Yeah. Because it's got the whole pain thing. Uh, single white female would have been an interesting thing to pair with that. Because uh, there's a little bit of that vibe in St. Maud. Um, and there's another one. I can't remember what the other one was. But anyways, someone says short circuit. Sure. Someone says Noah is the shining meets the Bible. I think that's pretty decent. Because it is like, all work and no play make Noah dull boy kind of at the end. So. <laughs> Um, Killer DLS says, do you have any incel friends? <laughs> uh, do we? Interesting. I don't know. Do we? I don't know. Do we have any people that are like majorly like into it to the point? I have friends. I feel like that were incels, but became, became functioning members of society. Right. Yeah. I don't think we know anybody that's like, I'm an incel, but also I think kind of like what you just said is I think once you hit like your middle age. You're going to kind of, yeah, life kind of makes you, like, drop the bullshit in some ways, you know? And it's like, I'd be very surprised if there's, like, a lot of, like, 45 or 50-year-old incels out there. You know what I mean? To me, it feels like a very 28 kind of thing. It's like, okay, you're a teen in early 20s, and it's like, oh, this is the time of your life where you're supposed to fuck all the time. All right. And then you just don't. For whatever reason, you don't get all that action, and so you get to your late 20s, you're like, yeah, it's because chicks don't like nice guys. Let's let's go uh, (laughs) let's go ruin a couple elections. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, so like yeah. And, but then you get into like 35, 40, and it's like you start to have kind of like more life happen around you. And maybe at that point, someone has fallen on your penis and you're fine with it now. And, you know, so uh, whatever. But uh, I, I do think, it, you know what I mean? I think it's like that time when you're kind of frustrated because you're in between youth and maturity, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, someone says I dated a guy who was probably an incel. I don't know. That's weird. That's a weird sentence. One of my friends, uh, I found out she dated this guy for years, and then they broke up. And she was like, "Yeah, he did, he like stopped uh, banging me for like the last nine months." I was like, "Geez, like." But you just waited, I guess. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> That's a weird story. That's the end of it. Um, I'm sure there's some forty year old incels. Yeah, maybe you know. Someone says, "Can sure. we newsboys a little?" I feel like we just did, but. Uh, Incels are incels. What's going on in the news right now? I am, I am fucking not up to par. Well, Trevor and I used to take the uh, New York Times quiz. Really? Um, we would actually do pretty well. Yeah. We, we got it. We got a full sweep a couple times. I don't think we're. You want to try it? You want to try we the can, New York Times but, quiz? But I mean, I so I work in like news kind of stuff, uh, you know, kind of now. But you haven't been paying attention at all because you've been focusing on your movies. So you don't know. No, I I haven't been focusing. On, I'm I'm done right now. Oh, I'm so chill- now you're just chilling. Okay. I'm just I'm hanging. So you have no excuse. I was trying to get. I have you no excuse. excuse. <laughs> I have no excuse. Oh, but I don't subscribe to the New York Times anymore. Uh, so I don't. Yeah, I, don't do, I don't either. Eh, I'm not going to either. I'm kind of like over the New York Times. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so I feel like I'm I, I'm just. I'm done with them for for a while. We could start calling them the fa- what? What did Trump always refer to them as? The failing New York Times or something like that. Like yeah. Every time he would say that. Do you guys? Yeah. Do you guys world all? Okay. So every morning I play a, a raft of those little games with my kid. We kind of have fun. We do word all. Worldle, which is extremely fucking difficult. What's world all? You see the silhouette of a country and you guess what it is. And it's oh wow! Fucking difficult because there's so hey, many me, weird so, little ones. Yeah, dude. Is check it, it out. world with an L at the end? Yeah, of it? no world and then L E. Yep. Okay, world. What's uh, today? I don't know if I did today's. Yeah, I think I did do today's. I just get wordle. Wait, that can't be. Hang on. World ol. World ol. W o r l d l e. But uh, uh, it's very difficult. But it's funny because there will be all these tiny little weird ones, and then there's like the one time it was. North America, and I was like, okay, I got this one. <laughs> I'm Googling World Oil, and all I get is Wordle, like the entire page. Weird. <sighs> Let me try it. Oh, dude, you got to go look, because in my Google, it says showing results for World Oil, search instead or for Word Oil, search instead for World Oil. There you go. Then it comes up. There we go. Oh, I played it today. I forget, we go. I forget what this we country go. was. Um, oh, God, what is this? I don't this, know. Uh... So, so guess something, and then it'll tell you how many kilometers you're off. I'm going to guess 
Iceland, even though I'm sure I'm I'm wrong. I don't think it's there. I want to say it was it ended up being in Central America somewhere. I can't remember. It was something I was like I. I'm six thousand four hundred thirty-one kilometers off, but I don't know. Look at the arrow. Kilometers. Is there an arrow that points? Oh yeah, that way. Okay, so so it's probably in the Newfoundland, Caribbean. or is it? Maybe it's, it's probably Newfoundland. further south. I think it's in the Caribbean, but I can't remember. But it's really it's Unknown it's country. really hard. It's really hard. You think that's in the Caribbean? If you start typing something, they'll you start typing in, and then it'll give you a list, and then you can select from the list. Uh, it's really hard. Share your screen, please. Yeah, share share screen. If you're gonna do that, though, I actually gotta switch. Uh, Fuck it. I'm no, not, I'm I done can. With it. I can do it. Okay. Anyways, uh, any sexy flat earth stories? If someone was asking about uh, Framed, yeah, Framed's a good one. Have you played that one? I like Framed a lot. Framed, framed is, is fun. really fun. Uh, movie Dole is fun, where they show an entire film in one second, and you guess it. Really? Yeah, and then if you're wrong, they show you two se- the whole film in two seconds. So it's a whole film and so Whoa. It's like in one second, and then they stretch out a little bit. And then it goes more. And like two days ago, there was one, and it was a diner, and it was clearly Quentin Tarantino, and it was clearly L.A. And I was like, "All right, Jackie Brown, wrong." And then then it played the two second one. And what's funny is once you slow down even a little more, some movies have very recognizable titles. So like even in that two seconds, I can see, "Oh, Pulp Fiction," because when oh, Pulp Fiction yeah. starts, it's huge yellow letters, you know? Yeah. That yep, scroll yep. up the screen. So yeah, it's really funny some of them. And but God, my my daughter, like you know, we. She was like 10, and we had watched The Matrix a few months ago, and one time it was The Matrix. She goes, that's The Matrix. But I guess that's not a hard one to get in one second, you know. But uh, there's some there's some good ones out there. But I In your it, opinion, what's Tarantino's best movie? <sighs> well, I do love Inglorious Bastards. I do think uh, Jackie Brown I love. Uh, and I really, you know, I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again a few weeks ago, and I really, really liked it. You know, so I don't know. What What do you think? I don't know. I, I I think maybe Pulp Fiction. I mean, Pulp Fiction is fucking awesome. You know what I mean? It's really hard and, to argue. Yeah. And I love Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think it's a fucking amazing. I also think Django is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I uh, did. And Kill Bill is fucking fantastic. It's yeah, tough, dude. man. Do you consider now with Kill Bill? Do you say it's all one movie? What do you is that how you view? Well, it? he thinks of it as all right, one movie. Right. In fact, and he tells a story that like Harvey Weinstein came to set and was like, you know, how are you going to cut this down to? Uh, how are you going to cut this down to to you know a single movie? He's like, I don't know, I don't know. And it was actually Harvey's idea to to do it in in two movies. Huh. Um because if you d- if you divide them up, Kill Bill Two is my favorite. But yeah, as one piece, it's uh it's great and uh, it's really weird, like in a good way. Because like, oh, the summer that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out, I watched all of his films in release order. And so what's mm. interesting about Kill Bill is you watch uh, Reservoir Dogs. And then Paul, and I probably watched True Romance too. But then you watch Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, and then you get into Kill Bill. So it's like Kill Bill changed your idea, of kind of what Tarantino was doing. You know what I mean? Because like all yeah. those other movies are crime films, and yes, they're clearly by a guy that loves movies and is referencing things and blah blah blah. But like Kill Bill started him doing his like movie movies where it's like filled with references to the point that he turns it into his own art kind of thing you know yeah. and so like going for jackie brown which is maybe his most one of his might be his most grounded movie you know what i, I mean? think so yeah uh into fucking samurai secret samurai spy ladies is like it was kind of jarring because i watched it, yeah, like, it was fun one night the next night i was like whoa this is fucking weird <laughs> you know? yeah. but, but i love it man and uh, someone who loves Martial arts choreography, it's like it's so cool. They brought in uh, Yen Wuping and all that, and it's great, you know? Yeah. And do you remember a long time ago, Trevor had a movie idea uh, for something that the, I, it was called Kill Billy. About, Killing Billy. Uh, Killing Billy, right. Yeah. And then Kill Bill came out. <laughs> yeah, the premise, so yeah, before Kill Bill came out, Trevor wanted us to make a Whitest Kids movie called Killing Billy. Oh, God, I just remember it, the plot. Yeah. And the plot is pretty insane. That's I think it was crazy. about a boy who was like a little kid who was, he was like the property of a sex ring or yeah, something like he that. He was being used in kitty porn. And he escapes. He was being used in kitty porn. And he escapes. And, he escapes, and the kitty porn ring has to find him and kill him. Right. To like not go to jail yeah and i forget and what, i cannot yeah. for the life of me remember anything beyond that so there was a few things like so uh, so some of us i think his idea was sam plays the porn star who was the guy who was the kid's like love interest 
Oh and my he's God, trying to this pre- is so fun. It's a crazy idea. So I think Sam was, and so Sam's like trying to protect the kid or whatever. And then there were some cops. I'm sure some of us play the cops. And I do know at one point there, it, it I can't remember, but he had, there was one set piece because there was kind of, a, it kind of got into an action movie territory at some points because like a chase movie, you know, and there was like cops and stuff. Uh, so at one point he wanted a blood bank truck to explode because he's like, that just looks so cool. <laughs> It's not wrong. No, it would look amazing. A huge explosion of blood. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, kill killing Billy and then kill Bill like two years. It was like a now. I remember and then Kill Bill came out. I was like, what the fuck? Like Like, like, what the fuck? Yeah. We were like, what the fuck? Why isn't this about kitty porn? (laughs) (laughs) But you know what was fun about the the last time I watched Kill Bill is like and you know, you see it we saw it like whenever it came out in our mid twenties and it's just like, This is so awesome. And then seeing it again years later with my brain and heart and body full of scars and you realize like Bill is such a fucking manipulative gaslighting prick and all the assassins are like his victims you know what I mean like he, yeah. he really fucking took these young people in and like ruined their lives you know what I mean yeah. it's, it's kind of interesting that way because there's a, there's a couple scenes when they show the flashbacks where he's so fucking charming to Beatrix or whatever and then you just realize that's what's going on. He's just like yeah. fucking manipulating her. That's why after she kills him, spoilers, but after she kills him, she like the next scene of her is like collapsed in the bathroom crying, you know? Yeah. It's like a it's an interesting thing. Ben Atz P America, I don't, I don't know how to say your name. <laughs> says, Zach, what was Trevor Jetson's idea? Is that cool to share now? Yeah, I'll do it. This is like one of the best ideas ever. Um Trevor had this great idea to do a modern Jetsons animated series, um, but he had an amazing spin on it. So the Jetsons, you know, takes place in these houses in the sky, right? They're like, I think they're like connected to yeah. the earth by like poles or something, yeah. or, or yeah. is that right? They're, like, they're on long little spindle things, sure. But you never go down to earth. It's all just up in the sky, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And they like fly around to each other. And so in Trevor's, Trevor's Jetsons is, all of that is the way it is. But the show doesn't take place up there in the sky. It takes place down below the clouds on the surface of the earth where it's like fucking mayhem. And people are living like Mad Max level. Like the poor people live on the ground. The Jetsons are the rich people up in the sky. And it's about these fucking like savages who are like, you know, traveling in the wasteland and marauders and like killing each other and trying to get up. Kind of like Elysium, I imagine. I haven't seen that movie. Right. But trying to get up there to the to like, you know, and it's called the Jetsons. (laughs) <laughs> and it's the exact same world, but it's just the other side of the... I love that. Somebody says it's been done already. Well, I haven't seen it. I don't know. But um, uh, uh, Land of, George Romero's Land of the Dead was sort of similar to that. But yeah. There's I guess, yeah, Elysium. Like, yeah, it's kind of like Elysium. Um, but, but just to do it in the Jetsons yeah, brand is, is fun. And, and uh, a lot of people like are it. saying this, but uh, uh, tomorrow, July 31st, 2022, is George Jetson's birthday. Like, that's what they had. Oh, really? And How Jetson, do you know that? I saw someone tweet it, and, and it was in Jetson lore at some point. Someone figured out, like, because based on the year that it was in the show, da, 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 like, so... J- tomorrow is is his birthday. Oh, Adult Swim figured it out. Okay. Oh, this is brilliant. Someone says that's a conspiracy theory that the Flintstones takes place on the ground in the Jetsons. Oh, I love, that. I love that. That's so cool, dude. Have you ever heard the Pixar theory? No. Oh my god! And then, uh, somebody, somebody, uh, put, you can buy like an ebook of it on Amazon or something. And this was years ago that I last heard of it. So now there's been a lot more Pixar films. So I'm sure the theory has evolved. But so. They had this whole theory that all the Pixar films take place in the same universe. And, like, so the Cars, like, Cars is, like, long after humans. And then, like, um... Wally. Yeah, and, he, and Wally is, this like, is dumb. before that. I yeah. hate this theory. But there's some other stuff. But there's other interesting, uh... Conspiracy theories out there about, like, cartoons and shit. Like, I once read one by this guy that was uh oh i think there's a whole reddit called like bad conspiracy theories or something anyway so uh there's this one dude who tied aladdin like the animated aladdin into dune and how like aladdin and dune like aladdin takes place on arrakis somewhere <laughs> like Blow a bunch me. of stuff like that it's kind of fun but yeah you're right yeah. <laughs> all right somebody says Zach, talk about american legends yeah so sam and trevor and i were gonna oh, do a yeah. web series called american legends we wrote the first episode and it was glorious. So the premise of the show was going to be this. It was going to be kind of like um, Mythbusters. So every episode would start with me and Sam and Trevor kind of talking to the camera and be like, 
Hey, welcome to American Legends, the show where we tackle, you know, the urban myth that we've all heard about. We're going to, you know, we're going to like get to the bottom of them and like prove them true or prove them false. So come along with us as we, you know, unveil another one of our American legends. And the uh, the, first, the first episode we were going to do. Wait, let me see if I can find the script. It, it is. It is. <laughs> Fucking good. The first episode was basically like the myth that we pick of all American folktales was whether or not Rod Stewart swallowed so much cum that he had six gallons of cum pumped from his stomach. And so the the the, the deal is it's like a documentary that follows us as we have to get to the bottom of this uh, of this rumor. And so we're like, you know, we're trying to get Sam to drink a shit ton of cum, but to get that much cum, I have to like go to a, like a sperm bank and try and get it, and they won't give me all their cum. So then I'm like paying dudes to like jizz in a bucket, and like, and <laughs> Sam has to drink it, and then it's like, oh uh, my god, you know, Trevor's trying to like get an interview with Rod Stewart. He's like going to his house and like ringing his buzzer, and he's getting like you know rejected. It, it was just like, it was madness, but it was really fucking funny, and uh, we had that. a whole bunch of them planned. Yeah, bummer, man. Did you ever hear about the uh, travel show Trevor and I pitched? Danny Passman and Trevor and I pa- pitched it, and nobody wanted to do it. About breaking it's laws. Ringing a bell. Uh, we wanted to look up uh, weird. You know, every place in America has like weird, old, archaic laws on the books uh, for strange things. Like uh, in New Jersey, you can't have more than three scoops on an ice cream cone, or like somewhere you can't put a donkey in a bathtub. And it's like, you know, weird laws that were put into place at some point because some fucked up crazy thing happened. You know, some drunk guy put a donkey in a bathtub and it kicked someone and they died. So, okay, now you can't have a donkey in a bathtub anymore, you know, yeah. for whatever reason. So, our idea was to go to these different places and break the law. And see if we get arrested. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> and History Channel one. was like, so we might have to like get you guys out of jail sometimes. We were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah, the what's fun. fucking problem with that? Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. <laughs> but yeah, that's, wait, that's, I found the script idea. from oh, Trevor to yes. American Legends. I'll just welcome to the first episode of American Legends. And then Sam goes, week in, week out, we'll tackle the tales, rumors, myths, and lore that have shaped this country into what it is. Then Trevor says, and we will stop at nothing to get to the bottom of them because our creed here at American Legends is truth by any means necessary. And then I say, tonight's episode, did Rod Stewart have to get his stomach pumped after a concert in the 70s? And when he got to the doctors, did they find that he had eight gallons of cum in his stomach and they had to pump it out? (laughs) Trevor goes, We've all heard the legend. Now it's time to get to the truth. And then Sam goes, stick around. <laughs> um, I have the whole script here. It's only like 10 oh pages. Oh, my old. God. We should do a reading sometime. When we should back. do a reading. It's really fucking funny. That's a great idea. That's really funny. Um, I'm going to read through some donos. Uh, I'll we, read some we donos. we got a few more. Uh, so, uh, this... Oh, hold on, I'm reloading. Okay. The crazy saxophonist donated $69. It says, Timmy, thanks for the advice regarding taking the California bar. Now, I know that you asked me for advice the other night when I was streaming Doom, but what did I say? And then they say, Zach, I can't wait to see Barbarian. Also, motorcycles, question mark. Also, motorcycles? Wait, yeah. who, said, who sent that one? Crazy saxophonist. So are they asking crazy. You about yeah, yours? I know, dude. Dude, I haven't, I haven't ridden my bike in... A fucking long time. Really? I don't know if I've ridden it since I've been back from Bulgaria. Honestly. Oh man, it's been a long time. You should. I don't even know if it would start. I think the battery's yeah. probably. Good. Well, we could uh, send Sidecar your way. He's a motorcycle genius. Uh, and then Hyphen Potamus in the city donated ten bucks and says, "I saw the Barbarian trailer before. Nope, but it looks great. I love that the trailer doesn't give much away, but it still looks scary. Are you guys friends? Thank with, you. Are you guys? Uh, it, it does. It's awesome. Are you guys good friends with Jordan and Chelsea? I don't know. Have you ever met Jordan? I've never met Jordan. Are you kidding? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. You yeah, went to his movie. Yeah. They, I go over there all the time. They live like three blocks oh, from me. Do? We're like very, oh. very close. Like, oh, you are? Yeah, you know both of them. They were the first that. people I saw when I got back from Bulgaria. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't know that you were hanging out with them. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I know Chelsea, but I never met him, so that's cool. Jordan was really helpful to me. He he yeah. watched a cut and gave oh. notes, and he was like, that's great. helped me a lot before I went over there. Yeah. That's he's, great, man. He's cool. a homie. So, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's the only donuts for now. Thank you, guys. There was another uh, old idea that I was going to talk about. Set the travel show. I one time pitched my own travel show, and my agent at the time was like, "It's a, it was infuriating to me because I wanted to do where I go to small towns and find weird old men in those towns and have them tell stories. Small town stories with Timmy Williams and, like, 
just talking to people, you know, normal ass weird people because every town has like one. In my whole theory is one every small town or every any town, but especially every small town has like one cool reason that argues for its existence, whether it's like an interesting person or a good sandwich shop or whatever. For example, Roslyn, South Dakota has the world's, I don't know if it's only or world's best, but a vinegar museum. And if there's one dude moved to Roslyn, he's also a beat poet and he opened up a vinegar museum. So, you know, every town has something like that. So I was pitching this to an agent once. He's like, yeah, but we need, uh, we need to like, spice it up a little bit like what if you went to towns uh where a celebrity is from then you could talk to the celebrity i'm like it's like the point of the show is to not talk to celebrities yeah you know what I mean? if you like, want to talk to celebrities like, there's a show on every network every night for an hour and a half just you know, yeah. like, it's like yeah but uh you know you can find it like you know the the hometown like where angelina jolie or somebody's from they talk to them it's like dude you can find 800 hours of footage of angelina jolie talking about her life i want to talk to this fucking weird old man with one leg and a cow you know like that's but pe- yeah. i feel like some of that stuff I hated pitching stuff and I hated auditioning. I didn't even like pitching and writing meetings. Like I just, I've never felt good, like I'm good at that, at getting my idea across. You know what I mean? And and so many of those things, it's like you feel. I, I hate the pitching process because it's like you know, the, like you know, in here it would be good and how it would work, but you have to convince other people. I don't know. How do you do mm. it when you when you like when you pitched Barbarian? Like what were you? I never pitched Barbarian. I mean, Barbarian. I just wrote. I I wrote it. Oh, you, you wrote know? on spec, right? I wrote it here in the garage late at night, a bunch, and then I, I, Trevor actually, it's funny, somebody was like, when Zach talks about all the people he knows, he seems like less of a huge underdog. I, I am a huge fucking underdog, are dude. Are you kidding I, me? Like, of course I, he is. Are you out of your mind? Like, um, I didn't, I was dead in the water. I, I sent the script through someone Trevor recommended me to send it to, and thank God they liked it, and then they sent it to someone who read it and liked it. And that person mattered. That was Roy Lee, who produced It and The Ring and The Grudge and all that shit. So, like, it was a miracle it got to Roy Lee. And then he was right. like, oh, I want to make this. So it, it was that. It was just a total stroke of luck. So, no, I don't have, like, uh, I don't know. I, I'm bristling a little bit. Um, but pitching, Timmy, I don't know. Pitching is hard, man. You've just got to, like, do it a bunch of times. Yeah. And there is a structure, you know. Like, there's a structure for how a pitch should go. And it's, it's funny because, like, the thing that like I always hated when I was young that now I realize is really valuable is like if you're pitching a show, you want to say, and this is going to sound so hacky, but like, okay, it's like if Stranger Things meets the Brady Bunch, yes. it's a half hour comedy. Like, believe it or not. The elevator pitch. That actually helps so much because if you don't, and nobody, it's kind of gross to like draw comparisons to these other shows or other movies. Yeah. But if you don't just come out the gate and like do that, then the person listening to you is spending half of their RAM drive trying to trying to file it appropriately so they can kind of like contextualize what you're pitching. But if you just right. come right out and say, it's like this meets that, it's in this format, here yeah. we go. Then they're like, okay, now I'm ready to like accept the information. It's really weird. There's like little yeah. things like that that you don't want to do, but are actually like crazy helpful. It, um, it makes sense. No, it make, makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Someone said pitching is a separate skill. Totally. That totally, totally is. from like being an entertainer or whatever. Um, it's kind of like someone who's really good at campaigning for office. It's probably not good at leading. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like the skills that, that, that you need to campaign are the opposite <laughs> right. of the skills you need to like to actually lead. You know, to campaign you have to like divide people, and to lead you have to unite people. Right. It's like really tough. Uh, somebody says James Cameron Aliens pitch was great. Was goat greatest of all time is that story i don't believe that story i don't believe that story either i think that sounds like a simpsons episode that has now the simpsons has been on so long that its older episodes have just entered the lexicon and people forget what it's from which is what happened to the bible so with the simpsons you're seeing the start of a religion that will ruin the world five thousand years from now so there you go um yeah but uh yeah it's always uh and I hated auditioning. I, I, I like I, well, you know, they'd be like, "All right, you're gonna go read for this uh, fat guy fucking someone on a mattress in an American Pie sequel." And I was like, "How am I supposed to have enthusiasm for this at all?" <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, 
I did read to be someone that got murdered in the Friday the 13th remake, and that one I really tried hard, but I, I would have loved to. Oh, really? Yeah. I was going to be, I think the guy that he gets the mask from, or one of the first guys that dies, and I was like, ah, oh, I would have loved to fucking, even, that was before I was much of a horror guy, but I would have loved to get just fucking annihilated by Jason. Who wouldn't? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's one of those things. Yeah, I would. I'd be down. It'd be so much fun. I, I don't know when they're going to make another Jason. I mean, it's been in court for years. I think they're finally untangling that knot. But I don't, you know, I'm not a big fan of Friday the Thirteenth. I know. Yeah, we talked about that last time. You didn't. You, we did. A big slasher. You know, like the slasher. I like thing. slashers. I just don't. I, I feel like Jason is such a Michael Myers ripoff, and it, they're yeah. all they're all really crude. Yeah. You know, they're not very good. Yeah. Those and uh, well, but th- they're fun. I mean, what it is is the kills are fun, and it's about like, fun. You know. Uh, when, when there's the right match of an annoying character and a good death, like Crispin Glover yeah. in Friday the Night, uh, Friday the 13th 4 is terrific. And he's like a yeah. fucking whiner. He's an incel. He's totally an incel, that movie. Just like, oh, no one wants to fuck me, you know. And he does that <laughs> weird dance, and then he gets a fucking corkscrew through his head, and Jason, like, stabs him in the face or whatever, and it's great, you know. Not like bad. Uh, uh, Pretty good, but... Uh, the zine I sent you, Timmy, has a section about Trevor and Whitest Kids. I did get that. I... I I don't know if I read it all yet, but I have definitely looked at it. Timmy would be perfect for what? Okay. Anyways, I remember when Sci-Fi Channel would marathon all the Jason movies. Yeah. And then they did like silly shit, like send him into space. And uh, Trevor and I bought that bootleg on the street in Brooklyn and watched it. Jason X. And there's a great scene where the tough army guy is like looking for Jason and Jason's behind a wall and he stabs through the wall and stabs the guy. And goes, it's good. And the, ar- and the army guy goes, it's going to take more than a stab in the ribs to kill this old dog. And then he stabs him again. And the guy goes, there you go. And then he dies. Are you <laughs> kidding? That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, I'm sure they did that on purpose a little bit. Yeah. But like, Jason X is, yeah. I mean, you know, what, what? you got to have a sense of humor. But uh, like I said before, the first one or two of a lot of those series have a lot of value. The first Nightmare on Elm Street is awesome. You know. And Were you yeah. telling me that Jason goes to hell? He doesn't actually go to hell. Were we talking right. about that? We on talked the about that. And then we talked what about a let- down, man. Yeah, he like he, like it is literally like the last five minutes of the movie. Wouldn't that be so cool if the movie was like Jason dies and yeah. goes to hell and on minute five, yeah. and then the movie is him in hell? Yeah. Like that's what that we're would talking be amazing. about. Like an they eight, blew it. just an eight hundred million dollar movie where <laughs> Jason would be fights so like cool. fucking the devil and like demons and shit. Yeah, come on. Yeah. But uh, uh, someone's asking, how are you guys going to distribute Mars? And uh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, there's a there's an order to things, and the order right now is get the movie finished, get people interested in it, and then we'll maybe know more about how we'll distribute it. So yeah, we're getting there. We'll, we'll figure it out one way or another, and it won't take forever. We'll, yeah, no. Someone will either buy it and distribute it, or we'll we'll do what we did with Civil War, and we'll just put it on Amazon, get it, get and it that'll be that. out there. Yeah, you know, I don't so, know. We'll, we'll figure yeah, it out. Very good. Um. Someone's in our account is saying, "Should I hop on?" I think it's Sam, but I, I think we're gonna. No, be done Sam. Soon. No, no. Plus, I just got this all set Your up. Your baby for, needs you. I got this all set up for two people. I don't know. It's, yeah. Uh, plus, I think we're gonna be done soon. Should I? Should we do fan art? Actually, speaking of yeah, yeah. Stuff I, I do have to hop off at, at four my time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm gonna share the screen. So, uh. Hortan, bear with us. The technological thing is going to be weird for just a second, but I do have it sorted out. Um, hold on. I actually know what I'm going to do here. Quit saying hi to Sam. If he if he wanted to be part of the stream, then he knows how to do that. That's right. Okay. He made his choice. He has to he has to deal with it. So, okay, we're going to, uh, I got a transition here, and uh, then we'll get to fan art in just a second. So, right now, uh, they can still hear you, I think, but uh, all they're seeing is a picture of the turtles from their world tour, because I still had that picture available. So, okay. Guy Incognito um, says, fuck of Sam. <laughs> <laughs> fuck of Sam. Oh, maybe they meant fuck us, Sam. I'm sure they mean fuck off, but I just like. Oh, like fuck people. off. Okay, they could yeah. be that too. Okay, so. Um, what do I do next? Nate, help me. Okay, yeah, now I remember. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, I think fan art should be working. Are you guys looking at chat? Does it look? Can everybody see the picture, the first one with uh, little Sam thing? 
I see okay. it. I don't you know, see I don't it. Know you if should see it. it. They should see. It. They say yes. They okay, see cool. it. They see it. Because right. I, I had it figure, figured up. Okay, so he, uh, there's a lot of good fan art this week, by the way. Everybody killed it. Uh, Big D liquor, and uh, they wanted. They noted that this is because last stream we were calling uh, Sam's son. <laughs> little Sammy Pig Jizz. Yeah. Oh my god. So dude. we referred to Sam's new new son as Sam's Jizz, and so <laughs> this is a combination of my nickname. I I feel bad about little that. Little Sammy Pig Jizz. Oh <laughs> Look, god. It is a great drawing. I like the curly. <laughs> queue of hair on top uh uh gibby's made this great uh, looks like a watercolor painting that's good of sex robot very cool that's pretty good and okay gravy robber has these couple of sketches that are fantastic this is from the dudes getting high with the squirrel falling in cool um yeah very good uh there's another one. Oh, this is me and you in the poop sketch ah uh, excellent <laughs> Uh, that poop looks really gross. Even just did that yep. little sketch. Good job. Um, and then they did another one, which is, oh, me and Darren from the uh, uh, nail gun sketch. Darren looks incredibly dreamy. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I look exactly like me. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm going to say, although I was pretty fat in those days, I'm going to say I felt like that my face isn't quite that fat, but I mean, definitely ballpark. <laughs> Um, what else we got? Okay, I am not a plant. Posted these weird little sketches. Sings in the shower. This. Is that a Trevor thing? I don't know. I think it's from a Trevor album because the other ah. one is a Trevor album. What is this? I'm sorry. We, we got to have some standard of, of what, know. Okay. what we do for we'll fan art. This looks like somebody took five seconds. Yeah, you're right. To, to do that, we'll go. Pat, we we won't do that. Just like you know, what? I got to put up. You're right. I got to put up standards for that. Just like I won't do the AI generated stuff. You know. Um, let them graduate. Got the Stegosaurus tattoo. I had forgotten to tell us about it, so they did, and there it is. Very nice. Um, this is funny. Stay at home. Joe said a few days ago I got super baked. Looked at my tablet today and found this. My brain is so stupid. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I love it. I don't quite understand it, but it's awesome. Like, yeah, I don't get it, but it's great. No, it's so good. Uh, and then Thule of a Fook, who had a T-shirt on last time, made this one from Buckerson and Myers, which. Is this something Trevor's character said? I know that somebody say, said it. I can't remember. I don't know. Never kiss. Never Is that like a line of cocaine? Yeah, totally. And I think it's okay. something he tells Pip, you know, to like a parenting advice, I think is what it was. But anyways, uh, so there's that. And now we're going to uh, go back to, oh, God, hold on. The stream looks really crazy right now, and I'm almost back to normal. Okay, cool. Um did I end the screen share? I did. Okay, cool. Good job. Why am I getting family. called a bully? What, what the what, what, fuck? All you guys. Well, for the for the art. Listen, I mean, I, I see Zach's point. I I'm very nice, and everybody submits art, and I submit everything. I, I put everything in there. But I do agree that I mean that second drawing was just a picture, a drawing of a credit card machine. So you know. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it just debatable. didn't look like it required any effort. I'm sorry. I appreciate it, but you like know, we we can't just. Yeah, you're we right. gotta have a filter. Well, because also look at everything else there. Everything else there was very good. Was good, you know. Yeah. So, and you guys, uh, there's a lot of talented folks out there. So it's just like how Sam we, Hammett says, "I love whenever Zach gets mad at fan art." I've never gotten mad at fan art, have I? Have I? I done, have I gotten pissed at fan art? I before? don't think so. I think I think there's one other thing that you complained about once that I totally agreed with and stopped doing, which was what was it? When fan art just takes our face and like puts it over something. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's yeah. bullshit. Because we're like, come on, like, but like, any any sort of recognizable effort I'm into, like the one from a couple weeks ago where the girl put a note that said "Go fuck yourself, doll liquors" in a box and left it at the top of a mountain. Like that's fan. Like I count that as fan art. That's incredible. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Or that one time a lady shared a story that she like hooked up with some dude and like woke up at his house and saw in the corner he had like a, a jug labeled PCP like that he must have got at one of our shows or something. That rule. That's a great story, you know, so that kind of stuff. I count a good story as fan art, you know, but uh, um, Or didn't that guy shoot that senator? He's like, uh, he yelled like <laughs> GFYDL and he shot yeah, that senator. That was great. And, like, and so yeah. we, we showed the news footage of that. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, do you ever see... That's our Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever happen to catch like the things John Hinckley says like on Twitter and stuff like 
You know that he's out now, and he's like... Dahlicker John Hinckley? <laughs> Confirmed Dahlicker John Confirmed Hinckley? Confirmed Dahlicker. But, like, he was, like, talking about... He, like, he's gonna have, like, a gathering of people soon. It's like, dude, I don't think you should be saying that. Dude, he's gonna get fucking tapped. <laughs> that guy, if he's not in hiding, like, he's... Yeesh. I mean, I, we all thought it was cute when he was just, like, putting out his little Zoom videos with guitars and stuff, but now it's like, dude, you can't go have meetings. <laughs> yeah, it's... What are you trying to pull here, man? They uh they changed the law because of you. <laughs> like, Jesus, buddy. Uh, what else? The is guy who I shot thought? Shinzo Abe in Japan apparently succeeded in turning the country against the cult, who he said ruined his family. Very interesting story. Oh. All right, okay. That oh that just happened. That, isn't that weird? I thought that was weird. That like. It, I, it just doesn't happen very often when a leader gets like assassinated. Oh, that's you know crazy, I mean? man. Oh, you know what? When I said Hinckley better be in hiding, I forgot Hinckley's the one that shot Reagan. I was thinking of Mark David Chapman who shot Lenin. Oh. I don't think anybody gives a shit about Hinckley. No, no one's going to come kill Hinckley. No. Mark David Chapman. Right. Now, people, that Chapman. guy better never show but, his but face because Hink- he'll never get out. But like, yeah. But I still think it's like, and I don't, I mean, I mean, shooting at Ronald Reagan, I don't want to say anything that gets us in trouble, but like, there's yeah. there's other things I did. Let's just say there's other things I disagree with more. <laughs> there's a lot I care about more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I care about other things. But still, yeah. I don't think if I was that guy and got out and, you know, oh, people are following you on Twitter. They like your songs. I just don't think you should say, let's go meet somewhere. Because it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, not a good look. People not are going to be like, well, what do you want to do at your meeting? <laughs> He's like, let's meet at the Hilton right above DuPont Circle. But maybe it's like you said, and he's a doll licker, and he's just referencing the uh, you can't say you want to kill the president sketch. My high school was two blocks away from where he shot him. I would walk past it every day. That is crazy. It was cool. John. Um, All right, man. Uh, We're done. Let's call it. This was great. Timmy, a blast. I enjoy our one-on-ones. Me too, man. I think they're cool, and uh, I think people dig it. And uh, Yeah, uh, I didn't have this set up for you, Sam. I'm sorry. Go, go look at your baby. <laughs> yeah, Sam, go stare at your baby. <laughs> That's what people do. That's what people do. You look at your baby. All right. Uh, I'm going to raid somebody and uh, get out of here. So go do your thing, buddy. All right, guys. Later, everybody. Bye. Thanks, doll lickers. See you later. Bye, whore town. Later, Timmy. Uh-oh. Sam. Are you making the show worse, Sam? What? Uh, can you guys hear him right now? I've got headphones on. Sorry. Go ahead, Sam. What? I you are on speaker. Okay, good. He's tired. He's tired, you guys. He's tired. That's why he's he's being crabby right now. He's tired. People people were asking for it. People want to me here, but you kept me off. We have like ten minutes. Do you want to do you want to come on right now? All right, you come on for the last six minutes, and I mean, it's better. This better be worth it. <laughs> I'll send you an invite. Give me a second. Uh, but here's the, here's the real thing: is I was about to hop over to fan art, and your brother helped me kind of figure out all that and get it set up. And I had the the me and Zach thing set up, so I honestly was worried about uh, having you, uh, you know, having it throw everything off. You know what the funny thing is, though. What's that? Oh, interesting. So you're saying that you and Zach are the same person. Here he comes. Also, why did I, I guess I accidentally opened up my Steam. Sam, are you here? Okay, let me get my uh, headphones back on. Are, are we the same person, me and Zach? Hey, 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 you there? What? Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that you and Zach are the same guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, like, you know how, like, in Fight Club, like, Ed Norton, he had, like, a really good job, and he had his he had his life together in a way, and then, like, if you looked at, like, Brad Pitt from the outside, that guy's a mess. Uh, I'm the Brad Pitt. Oh. 
But 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 also, I mean, everybody. So so what you're saying is a bunch of like 19 and 20 year old dudes that don't get the whole message of the story are going to become huge fans of you. What just yeah. happened? What just happened? You just oh, went I, totally I, overexposed. It was crazy. I, I was. I thought I was a little underexposed. So I oh, tried okay. to. Uh, how's it going, it buddy? Going. How's how's baby life? It's good. It's good. Yeah. Um, you tired? Yeah, the baby. The baby is in this like the just just shitting all the time and sleeping and uh, it's 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 not like a thing yet. Like right. it takes some time for a baby to become a thing. Yeah, I heard a uh, um, here's a hot take. I heard a uh, a Bill Burr joke where he was like he's like I think people you know I think abortion should be legal. I think blah blah blah. And he goes, but I also think that abortion you're killing a baby. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's like a funny premise for a joke. And then I had a baby and I was like, that baby's not a person. That baby is like, <laughs> dude, that baby is an amoeba. Right. You know, like the, the first couple months, uh, you can like, because this is what what I would do with my daughter uh, the first month or two. You can like lay them on a thing to go like grab a glass of water or go answer the phone or something and they can't move. You know what I mean? Like I would just like quick yeah. set her down on like uh, the like a couch cushion just for a second and like it's like cuz they can't move. They don't do anything. They're just there, you know. They don't do anything. They don't do yeah, anything. But they but like if you don't look at them long enough they die. Right. <laughs> I remember it. And this used to be an old stand up bit of mine but like she was screaming in the middle of the night and was one or two months old. And I put her in the car seat and was rocking her back and forth like this. And I'm standing in the apartment we had. This is when I still lived in Portland. I'm standing in the apartment, looking out of the picture window at at our at my car and just swinging her in this car seat. And I was so tired. It's like three in the morning. She's been screaming. I just remember thinking to myself, like, I could, like, just go put her inside the car and come back in for a little bit and let her settle down. And then I was like, wait, wait, I can't do that. That'd be crazy. I can't do that. <laughs> But you get there, like your sanity People, starts yeah. to like turn, you know. But I always say uh, the reason babies and little kids are cute is because if they weren't cute, you would just fucking leave them like on a street corner. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. it's just like you're fucking insane, you know. But so does he? Has yeah. he started sleeping better at all or no? You know, he's pretty good. It's he's my baby, so he sleeps, <laughs> sleeps pretty well. Uh, I mean, he's not sleeping through the night, but like, and it is like at, at like three in the morning, he is like, it's like, I think from like one to three is what time he thinks the day is. <laughs> uh, so, you know, like throughout the day, he'll wake up just to eat, have his diaper changed and be burped. Uh -huh. And then he goes back to sleep. But between one and three, he'll do that and then be like, I'm going to look around for a little while. Ah, yeah. It's like, what? why uh, are you up right now? It's just, yeah, they don't they don't really yeah. get it. It's because he's used to, he spent all his time until recently in like a dark room where there was no day or night. And so he could just kind of hang out whenever he wanted to, you know? And uh, that's, that's kind of part of it. Someone asked if your baby has any badass tattoos yet. Uh, no, it's like... <laughs> They're all kind of cliche. <laughs> He's got barbed wire. Yeah, it's like, eh, like maybe if this was 1992, that would be badass. Like a but, Chinese tattoo uh, that doesn't say what he thinks it says. <laughs> yeah, so. That's always um, a He's a baby. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> He's really. They're so bad. dumb. Yeah. I, uh, when obviously, you know, I've, I've been divorced for a long, long time. But when my daughter was born, I was still married. And I used to say, sort of jokingly, babies are assholes. And the person I was married to would get mad at me. But I think, and I think a lot of parents in the chat, yeah. and I think you'll agree, babies are assholes. I mean, yeah, you know like, who else are assholes? Children. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. takes a while to understand empathy. Right. And also, people but what, without empathy are assholes. Absolutely. Also, you and I are assholes. I mean, a lot of people probably think that too. But yeah, babies just like scream and cry and they want you to do everything for them. And it's like, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. But I also do that too. So. Yeah. I mean, I do that all the time. I, I'm shitting yeah. my pants right now. Um, <laughs> just, so, so. Just, are, are you raiding someone? I think so. Hey, how'd you guys like the meconium? That's that weird poop they get the cup first couple days. What'd you think about that? Oh, the the sludge. Huh? Yeah, dude. Uh, it did not taste great. <laughs> oh, you weren't supposed to do that. What? No, you're not supposed to eat it. You're supposed to use it as industrial like glue. 
or just throw oh. it away. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, but yeah, kids are, you know, mm-hmm. once they get to, well, and you, you know, you spend time around like Augie and stuff, so you've seen it, but like once kids get to around four, then it's like, all right, cool. And then when they get to like, my kid's fucking 11 now, and she's like a fucking person. It's crazy, you know? And like, it's like, someone it's just w- a dude. Warsaw XX just said, hey, Sam, what you reading? Oh, what are you reading? I'm, I'm not reading anything right now, but... I think I might pre-order that um, Heat 2 book. comes out in a week. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about that, too. I want to get that. That's a good... Thanks for reminding me. Um, Michael Mann wrote it, right? Yeah. 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 Co- and, or, like, co-wrote it. Right. And it's a prequel and a sequel to Heat, right? I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a fucking rad idea. And uh, Fucking um, L.A. bank robbery stuff is crazy crazy yeah dude it's it's so much fun uh well like uh you know i just saw for recently for the first time uh to live and die in la you know uh yeah and uh which i don't know if that bank robberies in that but they have heists but uh heat you know is great and uh i've talked to you about shitty heat before right shitty heat yeah den of thieves which is a movie like (laughs) shitty heat i've heard Uh, that i should i would probably love it though that's what i've heard yeah yeah i mean like it's it's shitty you know so like if you go into it being like oh this is shitty heat like right. Gerard Butler instead yeah. of Al Pacino. Okay, right. yeah, exactly. uh, you'll love it. Um, but um, the, there's a fact in the beginning of the movie, like a like it's like something like a stat that's like there's uh, you know like thousands of bank robberies in Los Angeles County every year. There's like every forty minutes there's a bank robbery, and it's like that's insane. <laughs> Is that true? That's, in- that's not. It's true. not. It's not, uh-huh. but it was. And the thing is, is that like, you know, like in um, in LA, like the they really, this is where like the, the whole like highway system started. And they uh-huh. have all these like this complex system of highways. And so what was a common place was that people would go to an area, rob a bank near the freeway or highway, I don't know uh, the difference, uh, uh, <laughs> and then jump on the highway and drive to another area. And, oh. and, and then it was like good for getaways. Uh, That's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, so, but like, there's this book I, I, I uh, read called um, Norco 80, I think it was, Norco 80. That's like really cool about this like insane bank robbery in California. Cool. That's uh, yeah, it's a great topic, and that's why a, a Grand Theft Auto Five has a really great heat esque bank robbery scene, right? That you plan, you have to plan it, and then go do it. Uh, but yeah, I heard someone else mention oh, LAPD was also corrupt as shit, right? Though not much has really changed in that regard. But right, what, uh, what has changed is that. Um, they have helicopters and they can follow people around. Right. But there is also like uh, you see high speed chases all the time. Uh, but yeah, uh, high speed chases. I've gone five minutes over now. Okay, My let's go. I want to. I want to mention one more thing that somebody said in chat though. You can go, Sam, if you need to. Okay, I'm glad you oh, were no, here. No, no. Uh, will you do this for me? Uh, give your baby a kiss on his forehead and smell his head for me, because baby heads, you know, they smell really True. good. True. Once you once you get, as long as you don't got that. Cradle cap. Oh yeah, my kid got that. Once you get that cradle cap out, out you, you, it's good. And he has a soft spot, the, the soft spot, the fountainelle. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Somebody mentioned. Uh, right. talk, bye, bye, Sam. I love you. Love you, Timmy. Thanks for having me. Yes, love let you, us know when. You. I mean, Zach, are love you gonna go you, back and w. be Zach again? Love you, WT. Yeah. Um, that's short for whore town. Oh, I got um, it. I got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go be Zach and uh, go um, uh, hype up my movie. Guys, I think it's <laughs> Zach's movie when it comes out in a month. Are you so excited I'm for so it? I'm so fucking stoked. You've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen uh, an early cut of it. I'm really excited to see it again. Oh, I can't wait, man. Uh, I hope it comes out. So, cool. It's, it's it's huge that like that. It, it, it's insane, I mean, man. I mean, uh, it's, it's mind-blowing that he got it to this level. It's great. I'm so happy okay. for him. So, uh, uh, all right. Well, I, I'm going to start talking about this book, then I'm going to go. So you can leave yet or not. But uh, somebody said Frozen Hell. They want to read Frozen Hell because it's based on the – it's what the thing is based on. Um, I have not read Frozen Hell. 
But I actually have literally sitting right next to me, because w- I've been meaning it to mail it to my friend and haven't yet, Who Goes There, which is the book that someone uh, made into Frozen Hell, whatever. But this book is what they base the thing on. And what's cool about it is that the the book and the 80s version of the thing are like fucking identical, almost. Very, 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 very similar. But they also adapted that in the 50s to a, a book called uh, The Thing from Another Planet. And that movie is great. It's a great 50s sci-fi horror movie. It's like got good tension, cool characters and stuff. But the thing is totally different. It's actually a, it's technically like a vegetable monster. Um, it's like this plant thing that shows up. So it's it's kind of fun that it's like so, so, so different. But anyways, uh, definitely worth a read, especially if you're a horror nut like me and uh, like to read books. Um, okay, so we're going to raid. Somebody said some kind of talk show we should raid. What did they say? Oh, yes, thank you, Nate. Sorry, Jesus Christ. Okay, I kept forgetting to bring this up. Trailer Boys is coming back tomorrow night. Nate, what did we say? 8.30 p.m. Central? Something like that. Uh, the theme tomorrow is um, bromances. And, yeah, let's just say 8.30 Central, Nate. We'll just say that for tomorrow, see how that works. So the 8.30 Central, which is 6.30 Pacific and 9.30 Eastern. So that's when we'll start Trailer Boys tomorrow. Uh, yeah, bromance. No one gives times in Central. Well, guess what, bitch? If you're going to have a have your co-host be someone who lives in the Midwest, now we give Central times. All right? So watch it tomorrow. Nate and I are the new co-hosts of, uh, uh, of Trailer Boys because we fired Sam because uh, uh, the rule is Trailer Boys don't procreate. Then Sam had a baby, so he got fired. Nate doesn't know I have a daughter. Don't tell him. Um, okay, so uh, watch it tomorrow, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Do the work. Figure it out if you live somewhere else. Okay, so uh, we're going to raid somebody, and Abby, Sally, keeps suggesting her friends. So we're going to do that. Um, Everything Now Show. Oh, that was just a bunch of clicky noises without anything happening. All right, cool. All right, we're going to watch... We're going to raid Everything Now Show. They are uh, watching Ass Cat Improv right now, it looks like. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Thank you to everybody who uh, subscribed and donated tonight. Let me just check and make sure I didn't miss any donos. I don't think I did. I do not think I did. So, all righty, they're ready to go. We'll see you tomorrow for Trailer Boys. Love you all. Be nice to Everything Now Show.